Hi everybody, hola a todos, ¿me oís? ¿Se oye bien? Bueno, si está, si está Philip, si está Felipe Mata, ha Philip, todo va bien. <coughs> Hola a todos. <coughs> bueno, eh, disculpad la tardanza, pero soy un auténtico, una auténtica nulidad con los ordenadores y aunque David lo ha dejado preparado, pues eh, tardo más. <coughs> Os pido disculpas. Voy a estar yo solo, así que tardaré en, en dar las respuestas. Eh, os iré leyendo cada cierto tiempo. Eh, os voy a enseñar un poco lo que nos han traído de Nocturna, que tiene muy buena pinta, la verdad. Eh, nos han inundado con pinturas y hay colores muy curiosos. Eh, iré hablando en ambos idiomas. I will uh, explain everything in, in, the, in both languages, in English and Spanish. So you have to be patient because it's me only uh, who is dealing with the streaming. Normally we are two, David and me. Normally he is in charge of uh, answering the, the questions by by the chat, uh, but I won't be able to be answering all the questions at the same time you, you ask. So what we will do is uh, <coughs> I will show you all the new product. Uh, we will speak and we will try a little bit about this, um, this new um, paint range by Nocturna Models. Uh, and then we will do like, uh, <coughs> like some minutes of questions where you can ask me anything. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> allergy, I have allergy. So, um, yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about this project by, by Nocturna. Uh, we have been in touch with them for, <coughs> for almost a year. Uh, they have been explaining us um, their idea about these new paints and I still didn't try them. I couldn't um, have some time to, to try them. So this will be a, a very, very honest. Well, like every of our streams, you know that we give you or I give you uh, my opinions very direct and very honest. And if I don't like something, I will tell you. <clears throat> this is not something to promote the paints. This is something to try the paints. I'm pretty sure that I will like the paints because I know Jesus, who is the um, <coughs> owner and the art director of Nocturna, and we have similar ideas about paints. Uh, we have discussed this several times. So I'm really excited to see what they have created because uh, if our conversations uh, went um, into the direction that they, they, they really um, <coughs> produce this, these paints, uh, then they might be very interesting, especially for the people that have tried uh, <clears throat> get the old Games Workshop paints. That's my idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try them first. Chicos, um, hemos estado hablando, sorry for, for this, uh, uh, the explanation will be broken in parts because it's the only way I can uh, say the same things in both languages, so it's what it is. I'm very sorry for this, but we cannot do this. So you can smoke a cigarette while I'm speaking in another language or whatever you are doing with your hands. It's a, everything is fine. Everything is allowed. Don't worry. You know, you can use my face. Anyway, um, besides the jokes, <clears throat> hola chicos, hola a todos. Vamos a probar la nueva gama de pinturas de, de Nocturna Models. Eh, es un proyecto que llevan eh, por lo menos yo la primera vez que hablé con, con Jesús Martín eh, <coughs> sobre estas pinturas fue hace más de un año y tenían en mente unas ideas bastante interesantes entonces bueno nos han traído un montón de colores vamos a ir probándolos y vamos a sacar conclusiones sabéis que me gusta dar mi opinión muy honesta eh, esto no es eh, algo promocional aunque evidentemente estamos eh, mostrando su, sus pinturas pero es un testeo y va a ser un testeo mmm, natural y, y, y real porque no las he probado. No he probado absolutamente nada, os lo puedo asegurar. De hecho, me acaban de llegar los botes ahora mismo. En fin, he de decir que los botes que vais a ver no son los botes reales, eh, son botes de testeo, ¿vale? Son botes de, de prueba. 
eh, que bueno, pues es lo más habitual del mundo. Normalmente te los mandan en estos botes, que no van a ser los botes finales, porque de hecho estos son botes de cristal, los botes finales van a ser más del estilo de estas que son parecidas a los, a los P3, a los, a los ¿vale? A los P3 de, de uh, War Machine, ¿no? <coughs> en fin. Uh, I was saying that this, this will be the pots that you will be seeing in the, in the stream, during the stream, but those are not the final pots uh, to release the, the paints. The final pots, they will be something more similar to these ones, I guess, that will be uh, similar to P3, uh, more like plastic pots, not this one. This one is, these one are for, for testing purposes, right? And uh, also, we're going to show, show you a few models of the Kickstarter, because this is a Kickstarter campaign where you can um, <clears throat> invest or you can uh, support them uh, with, your, with your help and you will have some rewards. I'm not very familiar with the Kickstarters, to be, to be fair. Uh, so it must be you uh, who check all the, the promises and all the different uh, levels uh, to see if, if it's something interesting for you. I think that the figures are fantastic, like almost all the range of, of, of Nocturna, which is one of the main or most uh, interesting brands out there with very uh, with a big, big range of very fantastic models. That, that's something obvious. I'm no one uh, to discover this. This is a reality. You can check them. I will, I will give you the link to see. Where's the link? <clears throat> Here's the link. So I, I will write the link of the Kickstarter right now. So we have the link del, del Kickstarter. Ahí lo tenéis. <clears throat> vale. Uh, here we have the, the Kickstarter. As you can see, <coughs> Juan Moreno o a la máquina de Bose Pantera o, o tienes un rollo de Murcia o ves buena fuente de <coughs> Bose en fin eh, estos son la este es el, el Kickstarter <coughs> eh, va por 79 patrocinadores esto bueno va subiendo mira acaba de subir no, como 100 pavos y de, otros 100 pavos ay qué divertido esto ¿no? <risa> Nunca había visto esto, la verdad. No, soy muy, no, no estoy muy familiarizado con los Kickstarter, es una cosa que me produce un poquito de, como de, de susto, ¿no? Entonces no estoy muy acostumbrado, no sé muy bien cómo va. Pero bueno, vamos a ver un poco por encima todas las cosas que, que vienen en el Kickstarter. De primeras he de decir que la caja me parece la hostia, sinceramente, me, me, me flipa. First thing I want to say is that the box is fantastic, I really like the design. Uh, so congratulations to, to Nocturna because I'm very fond on, on this kind of uh, details, you know, the, like how they, def how they design their, their, their things, their logos, their uh, graphic design, their image, their corporative image. And I really like this idea of, the, of this, uh, this design of the, of the border, you know, of the, of the small sites. <clears throat> Well, they are explaining here a little bit of the how the sets goes and the figures that will come with this campaign. <clears throat> Those are like classic topics, uh, classic uh, fantasy. Also some interesting uh, small, uh, I guess that they are like 35 or 30, 30 millimeter figures as well. Uh, we have some of them that we will show you right now and that we will raffle uh, among our Patreons in a while, probably maybe next month uh, or maybe this month. Chicos, eh, nos han dado figuras que algunas las vamos a utilizar para testear y otras eh, pues las utilizaremos para, eh, pues para hacer una rifa para regalar entre todos nuestros seguidores en Patreon. Así que si no estáis en Patreon, pues no sé a qué estáis esperando, porque aparte del contenido que sinceramente pues, eh, es muy bueno, y no porque lo diga yo, sino que podéis comprobarlo y creo que no os decepcionará. Eh, pues además estamos empezando a hacer rifas de miniaturas. Tenemos miniaturas muy chulas, entre ellas algunas que vais a flipar porque son ediciones limitadas incluso y algunas que no las podéis conseguir, nada más que en eBay por una pasta. Y se van a ir regalando a los suscriptores, así que cuanto antes os suscribáis, eh, pues más opciones tendréis. ¿Vale? <coughs> 
bueno, habla un poco de la, de la cremosidad, de que tiene un buen co una buena cobertura, de que tiene de que puede tener una transparencia interesante, ¿no? con, con saturación eh, para, para hacer veladuras igualmente. Eh, y bueno, pues que, que no es una pintura super mate, es una pintura entre medias. Y además viene con tintas y con pigmentos metálicos, cosa que es muy interesante, ¿vale? Los colores tienen muy buena pinta visualmente, ahora los probaremos y bueno, pues veis que eh, están desarrollando distintos sets que podéis eh, ver aquí y echadle un ojo a ver qué os parece y toda esta gente que la está probando entre ellos nosotros como podéis ver aquí en fin, eh, echadle un ojo al Patreon porque yo creo que merece la pena por lo menos eh, pues, eh, mirar si, si queréis apoyar un proyecto como este Nocturna siempre, eh, y esto es una realidad, eh, sea... Eh, estoy en otro lado, ¿dónde estoy? Me estáis viendo, ¿sí, no? ¿Y por qué no puedo ver esto? Eh, vale. Un segundo, chicos, un segundito, ¿eh? Bueno, vale. Vale, eh, algún set que me llame la atención. Bueno, ahora voy, voy a hacer ahora haré una ronda de preguntas porque, de verdad, yo soy una persona bastante limitada en mi capacidad intelectual y esto implica que no soy capaz de contestaros a la vez. Y, entonces, voy a ir por un poco por orden, si no os importa, y luego hago una ronda de preguntas y os respondo a todo, ¿vale? porque tampoco las he probado, entonces eh, según como sean, pues a lo mejor te digo una respuesta ahora y luego me arrepiento al rato, ¿vale? Bueno, gracias a todos los que os estéis suscribiendo, thank you to everybody who is subscribing, uh, thanks a lot, that helps us a lot, indeed, if you don't mind and you can share this uh, link right now so more people can join us and can see uh, this new product, that could be amazing, so if you can do this for us, Thank you very much, we appreciate. Chicos, si podéis compartir en redes sociales, la verdad es que nos hacéis un favor. Eh, nos hacéis un favor muy grande, porque así esto llega a más gente y a, al final esto luego podéis entrar o no al Patreon. Eso ya depende de vuestro interés, pero desde luego esto es gratuito y creo que es interesante para un poco para todo el mundo. Y también pues un poco por difundir eh, un proyecto nuevo de una marca española que lleva muchísimos años con nosotros, que nos ha traído figuras, algunas de ellas muy míticas, sinceramente, todavía me acuerdo de, <coughs> del uh, el militar americano leyendo la carta y muchas otras, porque tiene figuras míticas, eh, <coughs> que bueno, pues que, que están apostando por una marca, ahora por una línea de pinturas, que es algo complicado de hacer, yo lo sé porque, como algunos sabréis, he creado o he ayudado a crear pinturas para Escala 75 en su momento, y sé todo el trabajo que hay detrás de esto, no es nada fácil, de hecho Nocturna ya tenía experiencia diseñando pinturas para gamas y sets de Vallejo, y ahora se han decidido hacer su línea personal, eh, pues imagino, siguiendo los gustos personales de Jesús Martín, que por cierto, por otro lado, pues es uno de los pintores, que, para mi gusto, eh, mejores de España. A pesar de que su estilo no tiene absolutamente nada que ver con el mío, de hecho creo que somos como el Jin y el Jan, porque vamos, yo soy color, explosión por todos lados, y él es todo comedido, todo correcto, con una técnica depurada y demás. Con lo cual vamos a ver un poco este testeo, qué tal funciona, desde mi prisma, tra trabajando un, un pelín más agresivo porque os voy a dar una chapa interesante pero luego me pondré a pintar para que la veáis, las veáis en acción, aunque creo que es interesante probarlas en papel primero y un poco eh, probar la las viscosidades y demás, ¿vale? Eh, la transparencia, la sat el satinado, eh, la saturación y demás y luego nos pondremos a pintar una, una figura. Guys, uh, excuse me for speaking so much in Spanish, but I will do the same in English. I was saying that you can um, that you can check this uh, <coughs> Kickstarter. That then you decide or, or not if you want to support this uh, this uh, project. But just to say, who is Nocturna? Nocturna is a Spanish company that has been producing amazing models that you can check in their gallery, uh, in their website. You can check their range, which is simply amazing. Sincerely, is one of the best uh, miniature ranges uh, of the last, I would say, 15 years. 
I think they started, no, 15 years, maybe not, because I think they started in 2009 or something like this, uh, because I saw the first figure that they released uh, in a, it was a, like a, a, the first cast of the first figure. It was in the World Expo of Girona, and I think in Spain, and I think this was, I was, I was a judge there, and um, Jesus Martin brought the figure to show it to the people, and I think it was like, 2009 2010 something like this but well nine years or ten years developing really amazing product and now i know that they were um, doing some sets of paints for uh, some companies like uh, vallejo they were de de designing some some colors some of them that are quite interesting as a color uh, selection you know that or most of you you know that i'm not a big fan of the set of the pre-made sets because i prefer to mix myself but we are going to check in both ways we're going to check how they work by themselves the the pre-made mixtures like the skin tones that we have some of them here but also we will uh, try the saturation and the vibrancy of the paints and how they can be combined uh, as a primary um, selection of colors let's say right so <clears throat> uh, let's let's move and and show you a little bit of these uh, colors as i said uh, the pots are not the official ones because those are testing pot, pots, right? Um, but at least you can see like how the colors look like in the in the <clears throat> crystal um, in the crystal pots, right? And the names that will explain you more or less the selection of colors that they have decided, right? Because we have many, many, many colors. We have two boxes like this. So, if we, if you give me time, because I will be a couple of hours showing you the paints, uh, <clears throat> then you can maybe uh, watch it uh, afterwards. If you, if you get bored, and you can, you want to come back to see how I paint, then you go for uh, fast forward, and that's it, right? And I will also try the different uh, colors but I will also mix that, those different colors with some other companies to see how they react because you know that in our channel we are uh, using mainly um, Dowler Roney, uh, Winsor Newton, Liquitex plus some of the miniature uh, range companies like Scale 75, especially the new range, the new the artistic range and uh, the new Chimera paints uh, from Pegaso that both of them are uh, a paint range that we like a lot but both of them are more like artistic paints with a different viscosity with a different thickness uh, and these ones are more like a miniature range game that maybe are more co is more controllable for uh, most of you if you come from the miniature painting uh, and you are more used to this kind of dilution to this uh, viscosity which is slightly different right so <clears throat> okay guys so let's show you uh, a little bit of those paints first. <clears throat> well, uh, first of all, I would like to say that one thing that uh, captured my attention a lot is the metallic set. The metallic set looks fantastic, at least from the, the, the view, uh, uh, from the first impact. Uh, this is an ink. I'm, I mean, I was thinking if I missed something, but sincerely, it looks like a quite interesting progression of colors. Maybe a greenish gold could be great, but I, I figured out that you can mix them between themselves. So probably if you want to make a greenish gold, you can mix it with some inks like this one, for example, this olive ink. Chicos, eh, veo que realmente me parece bastante interesante porque es un... Eh, digamos que es un, una distribución de colores metálicos muy clásica es un poco, eh, pues nos recuerda a Games Workshop de, de los años 90 ¿no? y de los 2000 que tenían eh, pues una progresión de, de metálicos muy potentes, muy interesantes me da la sensación de que van a ir un poco por, por, esa, por, por esos derroteros ¿no? y luego que lo que me, a mí me faltaba un poco era este eh, oro verdoso ¿no? pero creo que seguramente se pueda mezclar con eh, con tintas, por ejemplo, y también tienen tintas. Entonces, por un lado tenemos los metálicos, que los vamos a probar. De hecho, voy a empezar por los metálicos, me apetece. Y luego vamos a probar las tintas, que hay alguna muy, muy interesante. ¿eh? 
no sé si es que no tenemos más tintas o no sé si es que eh, se han perdido en, la, en una de esas cajas que luego veré porque tengo otra caja ahí llena de pinturas que en teoría son las pinturas normales estoy echando de menos evidentemente una tinta amarilla no sé si la tienen, ¿eh? no, tampoco me quiero pillar los dedos miradlo bien en el, en el, en el Kickstarter de hecho, eh, no sé si lo indica eh, pero bueno no sé si lo indica la verdad bueno, de cualquier modo imagino que sí que habrá una tinta amarilla porque sería un, poco, sería un poco lo lógico pero desde luego los colores que nos han dado de tintas o al menos los que yo tengo aquí delante ya os digo que eh, tengo un lío de colores porque tengo como 10.000 colores por aquí entonces eh, lo mismo me las encuentro en la otra caja así que no os asustéis de momento, los colores, digamos, oscuros, ¿vale? Los colores con los que no vamos a ganar esta luminosidad, que muchas veces sí que buscamos con una tinta, pero para teñir, pues hay colores muy interesantes como este, por ejemplo. Me parece un color súper bonito, que es este Deep Scarlet Ink, ¿vale? A, veremos a ver el rojo, a ver qué tal va. Y luego eh, tienen las típicas tintas que son un poco como los colores humo, estos que muchas veces se utilizan como un lavado, que bueno, hay muchos tipos de uso diferente, pero por ejemplo para hacer óxidos o para hacer <coughs> desgastes o para, bueno, en realidad para hacer muchas cosas, para terrenos, para muchas cosas nos van a venir bien o incluso para darle carnaciones a las pieles. Esto puede ser bastante interesante. Quiero ver este Asphalt Ink, que imagino que será una especie de azul prusio oscuro o una cosa así. Y me interesa muchísimo este Turquoise Ink, porque el Turquoise Ink es un tipo de tinta que no existe en la mayor parte de marcas comerciales de miniaturas y que yo es un tipo de tinta que utilizo mucho, mucho. ¿Por qué? Porque me da una potencia al azul con cierta luminosidad, porque ya sabéis que el, tur el turquesa tiene un punto de amarillo, ¿vale? Que no lo encuentro con tintas azules, a menos que sea un azul eléctrico, un cian o algo muy primario y algo muy luminoso, que no es lo habitual, porque normalmente encontramos tintas azules normalmente muy oscuras. Entonces vamos a probar el, el, el turquoise ink también y veo que hay un midnight ink, que imagino que será a lo mejor más, más amoratado, por aquí no se ve, luego lo veremos. En fin, eh, voy a hacer una rondita de preguntas. Os voy a enseñar también algunos de los colores normales. Vamos a ver. So, uh, one thing I was saying, it was that the inks, um, they look quite interesting. However, I was missing some of the, some, some possible inks, like yellow ink or orange ink or even like fuchsia ink, something like this. I don't know if they, they have developed this because I see that there are more colors here, uh, obviously or maybe that they have given us not the full set which makes sense obviously because they have given us like 30 different pots right so i don't know if they are developing more this is something that we will uh, need to ask to them obviously uh but makes sense that they will produce uh, some inks of other colors i guess but the inks that we have checked there is one that really attracts me a lot with is the turquoise because turquoise ink is a kind of ink that normally you find in uh, artistic br uh, brands like Liquitex, Liquitex or Dowler Roney or Aerocolor or things like this that are really, really intense and really interesting that you can use them to boost other mixtures quite easily. That is a kind of blue that you can introduce in a blue mixture to get some luminosity because it has a little bit of yellow in the mixture, but because it's an ink and it's, it's translucent, it's transparent you will not affect the mixture as much as you will do with a regular turquoise that is not in the shape of an ink basically so that turquoise ink that we have uh, shown previously is quite quite interesting and i'm really eager to try and here they are the other pots uh, that are many different uh, many different colors this is one skin i'm gonna um, keep it for later even a dark shade keep it for later dead purple those are like selection of different dark reds at the end you know when you are when you uh, when you design uh, paints it's impossible not to follow your instinct and not to follow your let's say your own willing or your own desire right and if you check the paintings by um, by jesus martin who is a fantastic painter as i have said and i'm not licking his ass sincerely is what i think and is what i thought all my life um is a very different paint than mine maybe that's the reason why i feel attracted to that kind of painting as well because it's very different to my way of thinking and my way of mixing 
and he used to use many of these uh, dark colors, you know, like dark bluish colors, um, green blues, red blues, you know, purples, uh, dark reds, wines, these kind of colors, you know, are appealing to him somehow. So it makes sense that he has made a really interesting, uh, that's quite interesting, that a really interesting uh, color selection. That's a purpley uh, flesh. And let's see the oranges. That is always something that I need to check. Never mind. Uh, don't forget that those are acrylics. No, si, no os olvidéis, chicos, de que son acrílicos, de que los podéis mezclar con cualquier cosa que tengáis. La idea es que os guste, como cualquier otra pintura, pues que os guste sobre todo cómo cubren la viscosidad que tienen, la trazabilidad que tienen. The idea is that you will like, you have to like the viscosity, the coverage, the transparency and the way you flow with them, right? Uh, I just hope they are not chalky, which is probably the thing that I, I like the less in a paint. Those greens are quite interesting as well. I will separate them by different ranges of colors, so then I can show them all together if you, if you like. Some blues, <clears throat> some of them has been tested already, so we are not the first. We are not trying virgin pots. Algunos han sido ya probados, o sea que no somos, no somos tan especiales. Qué pena. En fin. Mira, los, los grises sí son interesantes, sobre todo si tienen tono, como este que tiene un tono un poco amoratado. Grays are quite interesting, especially if they are, uh, if they have a specific nuance or tone, because gray is an achromatic color, right? Um, but if it has a tone, it can help you a lot uh, to be, to introduce this tone in specific mixtures, right? Like for example, this one uh, has a tendency to be perceived as purple. This one is very bluish and this one looks more neutral. So I'm gonna keep them here. There is a purple black, quite interesting, because normally when I mix my blacks, if you see my Patreon videos, you will see how I mix. Normally I always give some chromatism, some color, some nuance to the black, and that enhance the, the, the feeling of the black, depending on what you're searching for. Imagine that you're searching for a super deep black, I will mix it with the blue. Uh, if it's not so deep, I will mix it with a purple. If it's something more alive, more richer, more, with the feeling of, of being thicker, you know, I will mix it maybe with the red that it will turn it more brownish somehow. Um, and these little nuances define the blacks very well. So it's quite interesting to have several blacks with different hues, right? That this will give you much more, pos much many possibilities. Es interesante, chicos, que tengamos eh, tonos de negro que tengan cierta tonalidad, porque esto es lo que yo hago al final cuando me veis en Patreon haciendo las mezclas y os explico, pues aquí voy a mezclar con un punto de, yo que sé, de tinta morada porque quiero darle un punto de profundidad pero no tanto como una tinta azul oscuro, por ejemplo, ¿no? Pues ellos ya han hecho eh, tonos de negro que tienen cierta eh, tonalidad, cosa que me parece bastante interesante. Y luego algunos colores como esto que parece un marino oscuro que son colores intermedios, no sabría si ponerlos en el set de, de grises eh, o en el set de, de azules o verdes, porque es un color muy corrompido, muy intermedio, pero que son colores interesantes porque nos, nos dan una ambientación muy fácilmente. De hecho, el, el azul marino oscuro y el verde marino oscuro son colores míticos que siempre se han utilizado en ambientaciones húmedas, en ambientaciones eh, oscuras, en ambientaciones un poco tétricas y que son colores, pues muy colores fetiche. Eh, por ejemplo, José Manuel Palomares los utilizaba mucho, Jesús imagino que utilizará mucho de este tipo de tonalidades porque, bueno, pues pegan mucho con su pintura. Tenemos aquí eh, dos eh, azules bastante potentes también vamos a probarlos ¿eh? ya, ya os digo mirad eh, un marrón hay varios marrones muy desaturados son colores un poco eh, pues son unos terciarios eh, pasteles están a, son apagados no 
Este es muy interesante, que es como un Scorpion Green, recordad de Citadel Antiguo de los años, de los 2000, de los 90. Uh, this, lo this looks quite a lot to this uh, old, old fashion, you remember this old one, um, Scorpion Green from Citadel, that was fantastic. This is a color that they have three or four pots right there uh, in, my, in my workbench, uh, and I use them sometimes when I want to achieve a very interesting green, and indeed, Uh, this color that I'm showing you right now, um, it's something that can give you, uh, let me check, um, that can give you a very interesting and very alive green. So if you check, for example, one of my last pieces in putty and paint, um, which is this orc. <clears throat> Well, if you see this orc, uh, this green that is quite alive, it has been painted uh, with, a, with a similar color to that, right? And indeed, in hand, this color is even more alive because the pictures uh, shows it a little bit grayish or too much for my taste. But this kind of color that is um, very typical to this uh, traditional um, green orc green from the from the 90s from this from all the people who who love the 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 revival the remember right uh, these kind of colors you can uh, produce them by uh, using this um, muchas gracias by using um, this color i say i'm saying here right so it's a very interesting color also this one is a very alive blue also looks like a primary blue and it's quite interesting and these are the last ones this is like a camo green something similar to a camo green and this kind of like grayish purple Tengo que morderlo. grayish purple that <clears throat> is more um, it remembers also to a very old I don't know if it was the hideous blue or something like this a very old citadel range color so well I'm gonna make a um, I'm taking a pill for the stomach and it tastes like something really bad. Now, in blue, yeah, that, that's the color. So, <clears throat> let's let's read some of your some of your questions. Um, I have shown you all the paints. Uh, I don't know what you're more interested to for me to try. Uh, so, give me your comments. Mm, we can we can start for the most um, let's say special that could be the inks for me. And the metallics let's see how how they work but i'm going to uh, check your questions first voy a eh, echar un ojo a las preguntas a ver qué me comentáis por aquí <coughs> perdonad vale <coughs> xx segismundo xx He says, I can stay for the whole presentation. Will this remain available? Yes, you uh, you will be able to see, to watch it later. Don't worry. <laughs> Sander, you work for Nocturna? No, I don't work for Nocturna. Not at all. I work for myself. But I, I have the luck to be able to check paints from many companies because I've been in this industry for ages, like a vampire and old vampires, we know almost everybody. So everybody give us product to check. And that's quite interesting because we can be some of the first to check those colors and to analyze those colors for you guys so that then you can uh, take your own conclusions and decide if you want to bet for this idea or not. 
the same as we did already with the Scale 75 um, new paints and with Chimera, which both were fantastic paints, sincerely, but you can uh, check the differences between them. Indeed, there is a stream uh, where I think I combine both. Uh, I think it's a stream of a Goblin. I think it should be uh, from a Kickstarter, the last Kickstarter of, of Scale 75, and I think that you can check it. This should be on the, on the YouTube channel. If someone finds the, the link and can post it, uh, then I will reshare. So yeah, I don't work for, for Nocturna, but you know we like also to support the the companies that are trying to bring something interesting, something good, and we really believe that Nocturna has been always uh, a highlight in terms of uh, quality, at least because of the the miniatures. Indeed, we have many figures from from Nocturna. I have used uh, some of the Nocturna models as well for some of my non-metallic courses as well, because uh, they were quite be beautiful models, right? And we're here to, to check the paints. <clears throat> Adrián Valdeoliva, ¿has visto la campaña mal por hacerlo en packs cerrados? Mm, ya, yeah. lo que pasa es que tampoco sé hasta qué punto interesa venderlo de primeras eh, sueltas, <coughs> teniendo en cuenta que hay un problema de estoraje. Tenéis que entender también que las marcas, eh, la mayor parte de las marcas son marcas pequeñas y Escala 75, por ejemplo, es una marca grande, entre comillas, que puede permitirse tener un estoraje de, de, de pinturas, que si tú pides un bote, pues van y te lo cogen y demás, pero Nocturna, pues es una marca pequeña que está intentando crecer, pero que lleva muchos años haciendo muy buenos productos, pero es que tener esto en stock es un putadón mmm, que flipas. Tienes que tener muchas, tienes que producir muchas, es una inversión económica fortísima y yo imagino que están haciendo una campaña Kickstarter en sets también pues un poco para que probéis las pinturas y para que eh, para saber si es eh, una cosa que a ellos les interesa seguir para adelante o no. No lo sé, ¿eh? también te digo que me estoy lanzando a la piscina dando un poco mi, eh, cómo lo percibo yo, pero por ejemplo, yo tuve no hace mucho tiempo la posibilidad de diseñar pintura eh, asociándome mmm, con otras personas y eh, era algo muy interesante pero oh, los presupuestos digamos que se iban un poco de las manos y sobre todo el mayor problema era el tema del almacenaje vale porque no son no es sencillo de almacenar y sobre todo si tienes un, un rango amplio de, de pinturas como es la apuesta de eh, nocturna que es muy diferente a la apuesta por ejemplo de quimera que quimera ha hecho una apuesta eh, por muy pocos colores eh, de hecho, la apuesta de Quimera, si habéis visto el vídeo, sabréis que el diseño inicial es un diseño mío. De hecho, los que tengáis la caja de Quimera podéis verlo, que la idea original eh, es mía y de Luca Marchetti y de Pietro Baloni. Y eh, en esa idea original, la clave era que hubiera muy pocas pinturas, ¿vale? Con lo cual, que el aficionado se acostumbrase a mezclar, porque es como, en ese caso, yo percibo la mezcla. O sea, como algo necesario, ¿vale? Pero luego hay otro tipo de pintura y otro tipo de pintores que son pintores más de proceso, que, tiene, que, que quieren vías más claras de color, ¿vale? Para apoyarse, como es el caso del tipo de pintura de Jesús Martín, que además se, se ve, se percibe, que es un tipo de pintura lineal en el sentido, no como algo malo ni como algo bueno, es simplemente un hecho, que es un, un tipo de pintura muy controlada en el que a él le gustará tener los tonos que a él le gustan muy concretos y entonces él hace una propuesta totalmente diferente. Nosotros aquí no estamos para juzgar eso, para eso estáis vosotros en vuestra casa. Nosotros aquí estamos para enseñaros el producto, que vosotros lo veáis y que luego podéis decidir vosotros. <coughs> Eh, Luis Alberto Lozano dice, ya tenía una pequeña línea, tenía líneas, tenía sets de pintura que desarrollaba para Vallejo. <coughs> Robert Sánchez Banshee, la imagen de la campaña no está bien enfocada, no sé a qué te refieres Robert, eh, pero no es cosa mía, entonces tampoco te puedo decir mucho. Coméntaselo a ellos, no sé exactamente a qué te refieres. Yo ya te digo, estoy aquí para probar las pinturas. Eh, ¿Algún set que me llame la atención? Hombre, las tintas me llaman la atención y si hubiera tintas amarillas y naranjas y fucsias, me llamaría mucho más la atención. Pero de momento las tintas que me han pasado me llaman mucho la atención. Y los metales también. Porque últimamente, o sea, no encuentro metales eh, que me gusten especialmente. Y he de decir que yo 
diseñé junto con Elías Alonso los metales iniciales de escalas de 35, que son muy buenos para algunas cosas, pero no tienen la densidad necesaria para cubrir bien de base. De modo que, por ejemplo, las de escalas de 75, y te digo que pues, eh, es culpa también mía, porque yo los he diseñado y no acabé, eh, o no acabamos de... Bueno, conseguimos algo que nos gustaba a los dos, o que nos gustaba a la empresa, pero no que a mí me enamorase desde la base porque no tenía ningún metálico que tuviera una cobertura y una densidad eh, a la primera, por decirlo de algún modo, ¿vale? Y sin embargo sí los he utilizado mucho pues para segundas subidas, incluso para veladuras de metal o para mezclar, que para eso los metálicos de escala 75 son muy buenos. Estos colores eh, de nocturna, si son como creo que, eh, creo que van a ser, seguramente tengan mejor cobertura. <coughs> Bueno, eh, eh, Sander, you say, can you show name of the silvers? I think I showed them before, right? This is heavy, uh, heavy armor, heavy armor, uh, iron fist. <laughs> That's a really cool name. Silver blade. Silver blade. El qué? Pues no se puede nada. <coughs> Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's let's start trying the, the paints if you if you want. We're gonna change to the main view. Are you older? How many we are? ¿Cuántos, ¿Cuántos somos? 91 espectadores, creo, ¿no? ¿Sí? So we are 91 uh, viewers, thank you very much. Um, this, uh, this will be a, um, a long stream and it will be um, slow because I've never checked these paints before and I have, well, dozens of paints So if you can participate and you can give me your ideas and what do you want me to check, what do you want me to try, I will do this uh, directly and uh, we can go even faster. My idea is that I will show you how those paints look like physically, how is their appearance, and then we will check on paper uh, how they flow, what's the viscosity, what's the transparency, what is the coverage, and then at the end of the stream, that's why this will be a very long stream that maybe if you don't have the, the time, you can check it afterwards. Uh, then I will test it on a figure, right? Because they have also show us the figures. Ah, I'm gonna show you the figures uh, of the Kickstarter, or at least some of them. These are some of the models. Well, the, 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 the cast is really good. It's always been, sincerely, I never had any trouble with uh, Nocturna mo uh, model, models cast. Um, so if you like the models visually, uh, you will be, you can be sure that the cast will be good enough, you know? That's the girl, I don't know the name, some kind of Valkyria. They look 3D, almost all of them. So that means that the, the fittings should be uh, perfectly done, no problem. This is Thor, that you, will, you have seen probably a really impressive uh, paint job by Michal Pisarski very recently, where you can try many uh, non-metallic or even true metallic. We could we could try uh, true metallic on, on this one maybe. That, and then there's also some very nice cartoony fix, uh, like this one. Algunos 32 que tienen bastante gracia. Estos, este me gusta bastante. Tienen un rollo muy Asterix Obelix. It's a little bit like Asterix and Obelix uh, cartoony feeling that I, I quite like it. Uh, dwarf. Well, there's a bunch of figures that are quite interesting indeed. Just to, for you to, to, to see if you want to wait a little bit. But there is this girl 
uh, this kind of um, <clears throat> Favole Victoria Frances style uh, figure um, we will we will try on top of this one that could be interesting I will do a, a quick sketch where you will be able to see the paints and those are some of the figures uh, of the Kickstarter these figures will be ruffled uh, among our patrons so if you have the this excitation excitement for uh, for knowing how are our tutorials thirteen dollars is not so much uh, you can you can try I'm, I'm pretty sure that you will like them and we will do some ruffles like every now and then we are doing we are starting to do some ruffles with some figures so these figures will be uh, ruffled at some point through our social media for the subscribers on uh, of patreon so if you have any doubts go to patreon uh, and subscribe and i promise you you will not regret about that chicos eh, estas figuras nos las vamos a quedar y las eh, las sortearemos entre nuestros seguidores de patreon vale seguramente si no este mes posiblemente el mes que viene Y ahora vamos al lío a, por, a probar las pinturas. <coughs> Me, nos hemos pillado una silla nueva de estas de, de gamer y es como absorbente. O sea, es, es, es jodido hasta moverse. <coughs> en fin. Vale, vamos a probar. ¿Queréis probar? Eh, empezamos por los metálicos. ¿Cómo te sientes about starting to try metallics first, por ejemplo? Y for this I will need a brush. Voy a necesitar un pincel que está encima de mi mesa, por favor. Hay unos pinceles en un bote, todos juntos. Y aquí tenemos a Sofía, la maravillosa tafata. Gracias. Vale, chicos, eh, vamos a... No, este, este no, justo la, la otra. Voy yo, chicos, un segundo. Sí. A ver. Ya estamos. Bueno. Bienvenido, Jero. Si tú dices que metálicos no, entonces habrá que probarlos. Mario. Vale, pues luego nos vemos, chicos. Vale, chao. <coughs> Steve, uh, with airbrush, I mean, let's see if we have time to try them with airbrush. That could be a possibility, but maybe if we don't have time here, we will move to Patreon at some at, at some point, or maybe we can do at some point like, a, I don't know, it could be interesting to make a stream on Instagram or something like this. I'm just like copying our, uh, what, what I see from YouTubers uh, because I have no clue or no idea of how this works. And I am like like your grandfather, <laughs> you know, with the social media. I'm probably the worst in the miniature world. Uh, but well, we can try these kind of things. Maybe we can do like a direct stream on Instagram. Maybe trying them uh, on uh, with the airbrush. That could be interesting. Let's let's try first these paints. Okay. <clears throat> well, looks like a nice pigment uh, for sure. It's very bright, very shiny. The texture. It looks like code arm. It looks it looks like the old citadel ones. This one looks very similar to Team Beath, if you remember that old Team Beath. It's quite similar. I mean the pigment when you uh, when you dilute it, probably it separates. So that means that these are better for full coverage. Uh, let's see where we can try these metallics without ruining the piece. Uh, maybe.
let's try with the Space Marine because we have not prime um, the the other uh, figures by Nocturna. So then we will try the normal ones on it. Well, and you see what kind of coverage it has. Tiene bastante buena cobertura. Me da miedo el oro claro. I'm afraid about the, the bright gold. Hostia, esto es muy bonito. That one is really, really cool. It's like a copper. Let's see how they mix in wet, like a wet blending mixing. <coughs> They are very, very similar to the old Citadel range. Really, really, really similar. That looks almost like a shining gold. Se parece mucho al, al antiguo eh, dorado de, de Citadel. No, de hecho, mezclan. If you see, they mix in wet quite easily. Indeed, let's try the, the brightest one. Mezclan muy bien en húmedo. Son muy cremosas. Uy, esta... Esta tengo más dudas. That one, I have more doubts. Normally, the, the brightest uh, golds always they tend to be, uh, they tend to have less coverage. So if that happened, like it's happening with this one, you can mix it with the previous one. And quite easily, you can create your different tones um, of gold. Indeed, that one that looks just yellowish, it has a greenish hue. That's quite interesting. That was the, the, the kind of hue I was missing at the beginning when I saw the paints. So it's that one. Normally that happened with the metallic pigments. They change quite easily the perception uh, between seeing them in the pot and then applying them directly. Y vamos a hacer una herejía. Let's, let's do some heresy by mixing it with white. I have the, the, the testing whites here. And there is one matte solution. So I guess this is kind of matte varnish or something like this, most likely. Pues mira, justo lo que estás pidiendo, Adrián. Que te gustaría ver eh, los metálicos mezclados con los no metálicos, a ver qué tal funcionan. Vamos a mezclarlos con el, con, el, con el blanco. De hecho, para no estropearlo mucho, o sea, me voy a intentar controlar. Eh, vamos a coger un poquito, vamos a coger otro pincel. Cojo un pelín del blanco. Take a little bit of the white that looks really, really creamy. The coverage. It's quite decent, not the best coverage, but to be white, not bad, not at all. So it could be something that you can apply quite easily. There are some colors that has better coverage, but maybe um, they will have some other properties that will be difficult to control. Sometimes they will uh, be maybe more satin or they will be too thick for your taste. So it depends on what you're searching for or too matte, that could be like, for example, some colors with a lot of coverage. Uh, some of them, they are very like sandy and they tend to be very chalky at the feeling, right? While this one is a medium matte and it's more similar to this school white or something like this. It's, it's quite similar in two layers. You can easily uh, cover and then let's mix it with some of the metallic paints to see how they how they react. Sometimes, especially with the true metallics, when you mix them with uh, with matte paints, the the pigment separates, and that's a that's a problem, right? With this one, probably um, let's see if it stays. And you can create 
different versions of different metallics as well like that one which is like a very cold bright gold to make some last lights No sé si lo veis bien, si se ve bien. I don't know if you can see it well, but well, metallics approve. <laughs> no, I like them. I mean, they're they're very very similar. I have the feeling. Also, I spoke uh, with uh, Jesús Martín a while ago, and he told me that he was searching for this kind of uh, chemical composition as well. You know, so it makes sense that if he is a lover of those old. Um, um, citadel range like coat arms um, and those those ranges that they were um, very easy to use you know and with with very interesting colors as well with good coverage you know it's a it's a very versatile uh, kind of paint that for a miniature painter will be really easy to use sincerely uh, maybe it will not have the strength of some artistic paints but it will be definitely much easier to use. So depends on what you're searching for, those would be your metallics. As I have said, the, the, the pigment looks not as thin as the metallics from scale 75, but they have better coverage. So that's an option that you have to choose yourself. Um, indeed, you can mix them both for, probably without any problems. We can check this later, uh, but well, my um, my veredicto, uh, veredicto. Let's check. Yeah, my verdict is that uh, the metallics are really interesting because what I said, uh, it's a very similar um, chemistry, is a very similar composition. Uh, like the or as the um, old citadel stuff i'm missing somehow like an intermediate gold that is more yellowish and before i said uh that they was searching for a more greenish gold this is something that tends to obviously we have not shake it properly and it's difficult to see the the real the real hue without you know when you mix it is something in between but to me it could be good to have something much more yellowish and something a little bit more greenish, you know, than what you perceive like this. But it's, it's, not, it's not something illogical, you know, because you can make something like this with this an intermediate gold and then you can easily change this with some inks. Let's, let's try some inks and see how it works. I don't know if you have doubts still this moment. I don't know if this is interesting for you or it's too boring and I go too very slow. I'm a little bit lost because my partner is not here, but you know I have to deal with this my, by myself. Uh, so if you have some questions, just ask. Um, let me find it. Let's try the inks. Vamos a probar las tintas, chicos. Eh, a ver qué tal funcionan. <coughs> Mira, tenemos aquí un Fiery Red Ink. Fiery Red Ink. Bueno, pues un rojito bastante intensito, me gusta. De hecho, es bastante, es mejor en este caso que el que, que el de Scale, 
que, que lo diseñé yo con Elías y es de los pocos que no estoy realmente contento. Ese y el, y el de. Ese y el amarillo. Bueno, es un color vivo, es un color potente. Vamos a ver si lo podemos mezclar y hacer un, un metálico eh, rojizo. Perfectamente. Vale, las tintas mezclan muy bien. Imagino que no serán tan tan intensas como... Me parecen un poco a las de Aerocolor, sinceramente, me dan un poco esa sensación. I have the feeling that they look like a little bit like Aerocolor uh, from Schmincke. They have this kind of uh, transparency, at least when it dries, here in the, in the paper you can check it. You know, that's like, that's like the distribution with more water, with more dilution. It looks interesting and you can mix it quite easily with the metallics. It works perfectly fine. So well, at the end you can make the metallic that you want by yourself without many difficulties and the coverage will be perfect. So in this case, uh, metallics, I really, I really like the metallics. I'm not a big fan of metallics because I prefer to do uh, non-metallic uh, since many years ago, more than a decade. But uh, the truth is that sometimes metallics Uh, can be quite interesting and for example um, one thing that you could do or, or, or for one kind of process that you could uh, that you could you could apply this kind of idea of mixing uh, colors metallics with uh, with inks I will show you something where I have um, worked exactly in this way which is uh, one of my old box arts for night models this is very very old is an Iron Man um, that I will show you right now eh, ¿Cuándo podéis utilizar esto? Os voy a enseñar el Iron Man de Name Models que es un poco este mismo concepto son eh, mezcla de pinturas eh, metálicas con no metálicas y tintas entre medias para no perder esa eh, vibrancia, esa intensidad ¿vale? ya que si mezcláis directamente con un color mate vais a apagar el pigmento metálico ¿vale? o sea, digamos que el, el, el pigmento mate agrede al pigmento metálico pero la tinta se une a él, es diferente let's say that the matte pigment it will be very aggressive against the metallic pigment, but inks will be very cohesive. It will uh, join together with the metallic pigment, right? This is a very old box art I did for night models many, many years ago. This has like easily 10 years. And uh, <coughs> this has been painted with this method. Indeed, that was painted with the old Citadel uh, metallics that are quite similar to these ones, if not the same, uh, to these ones from Nocturna. And basically this effect that you see, some parts are metallic, some parts are non-metallics. Um, and this combo uh, is created through the inks. That's why inks are very important, especially when you work with metallics, the, 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 the color variations, the nuances, the tonalities that you can, that you can create. Uh, to create some rusted effects and so on uh, is quite interesting and you can do this uh, just with, with this with, uh, by mixing with, with uh, matte colors sometimes or with inks if you don't want to lose this iridescency of the metallic pigment si no queréis perder la, la iridescencia esta de los pigmentos metálicos entonces mezclarlo con tintas que, tienen, que no son colores que cubran o sea son colores que se, integ que se integran muy bien por mezcla porque digamos que no le ofrecen densidad con lo cual aunque sean colores muy potentes y el pigmento sea muy fino y esté muy cohesionado eh, mezclan muy bien ¿vale? Jero, <ríe> no me por life, total pero bueno a veces, eh, en fin bueno, llevamos una horita. We have been, been speaking for one hour and I show you the metallics a little bit about the, the, the paints. We still have to check all the others. I don't know what do you think about the, about the paints for the moment, uh, the metallics. For sure, I'm not so sure about the others, uh, to be fair, but because of my taste, okay? And that's quite important. You need to understand that each painter has a tendency, right? And my tendency is to um, overwork with, uh, with the saturation. I oversaturate because it's my taste, you know? But uh, sometimes for, for doing this, obviously you have 
you have to go for the richest or the most vibrant or the most intense pigments, right? And that's the reason why the majority of the paints that I use are based on artistic ranges, especially like, uh, as I said, uh, Liquitex or Dollaroni or Winsor & Newton <clears throat> or Golden Acrylic, for example. But if I have to paint with metallics, these metallics, I will recommend them. Why? Because the coverage is fantastic, because they can be easily mixed with especially with inks, the inks from the same range. And I guess, I presume that it will happen the same with any other uh, paint range. Uh, and you can create fantastic, indeed, I'm, I'm quite impressed by the by the metallics, sincerely. I'm, I'm really, I'm quite, quite impressed. If you check that, how good is the coverage in one, uh, in one brush stroke? That's quite interesting. That was mixed between, I remember, this Nocturna uh, Fiery Red ink, and it was some kind of like copper coin right and then i will mix this with the gold to make a progression to show you how easy it is to work uh with met with metallics is one of the easiest things ever a monkey without fingers can paint uh, good metallics now it works fantastic you can create basically all the metallics you want quite quite easily just by mixing with the inks. And then we could go we are making this progression, right? From this uh, copper plus red ink and then adding um, that was this runic gold and it's still very reddish and then we add just with the water that that remains on the on the brush we add a little bit of this gold and we can push a little bit more the color quite easily so for as i said for creating metallic if effects and and this for painting armies it should be like super effective that goes really really fast because the coverage is fantastic. So let's move on. Uh, bueno, me estoy expresando mucho en inglés, poco en español. Os pido disculpas, estoy un poco atolondrado. No tengo aquí a, a David que normalmente me, me, me guía con, con esto cuando me paso mucho hablando de, de una cosa. Así que os pido que también me, me lo digáis vosotros porque así os veo ahora mismo. Pero bueno, básicamente los metálicos son muy, muy interesantes, sinceramente son muy cremosos, eh, fluyen bien, no van tan bien eh, muy diluidos, no aguantan una veladura de metálico, si, eh, si es lo que estáis buscando, rara vez haces una veladura de metálico, sinceramente, eh, porque al ser tan cremosos mezclan muy bien eh, entre ellos y es casi... Eh, es casi más asequible, digamos que la técnica que yo recomendaría es casi trabajar en húmedo o trabajar por capas, hacer un layering, ¿no? Um, entonces, no aguantan tan bien en dilución, pero cubre muy bien, tiene mucha potencia de color y mezcla muy bien. Y si mezcláis con tintas, también le ganáis eh, transparencia al diluirlo. Ojo, cuidado con esto, ¿vale? Um, I was saying that the worst thing about these metallics is that um, if you dilute them a lot, the pigment separates, which is very typical from this kind of paints like this coat darm or old citadel ones that when you dilute them the pigment separates but if you want to keep it unified one thing you can do is to mix them with inks because inks looks really really interesting right indeed let's let's check it right this is the ink i'm just adding water estoy simplemente añadiendo agua y vais a ver veis que tiene cierta iridiscencia veis que este es mucho más mate y que este tiene cierta iridiscencia ¿Vale? Eso significa que la tinta aglutina el pigmento ¿vale? y hace que no se separe eh, de, de tal manera. Entonces, bueno, podéis utilizarlo de esa manera. Imaginad que quisierais hacer, pues yo que sé, algún efecto iridiscente en la cara de una chica eh, o una carnación, algo así se podría utilizar. En fin, metálicos, no os voy a hacer una ronda de preguntas, no sé si habrá dudas. <coughs> Vale, Adrián me decía, prueba el dorado. No, el dorado cubre bien, ¿eh? Cubre bien. Pero de todas maneras, el dorado si te cubre un punto, si no te cubre del todo bien, lo mezclas con el previo, mezclalo con el Team Beat, que es el copper, o 
el copper o el, o el dark shield con cualquiera de estos dos y tendría que cubrirte sin ningún tipo de problema. De hecho, es un poco la clave, es que no tienes que ir a cubrir simplemente con el color. Muchas veces esto lo llamamos colores puente, colores puente entre el color que quieres cubrir y el color que quieres aplicar. Entonces estás un intermedio, coges el dorado, lo mezclas con el previo y ya lo aplicas. Eh, somos 82 espectadores, we are 82 viewers, so that means that people got bored. I'm so sorry for, about that. Uh, I cannot go faster, I have like, I don't know, 40 pots here and I want to check them properly. Uh, but when I can go faster, if you want. Um, bueno, metálicos mezclados, ya está, para Adrián. Uh, Sacramento Water, the yellow like, uh, do they have good coverage? That's something we have to try. Sincerely, I don't have many yellows. I guess that they didn't give us uh, the full uh, range, which is a pity, because I only see one yellow here that is in another pot. But as I said, this is like a testing uh, stream, you know? They send us a bunch of many, many colors, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have, I don't see many yellows apart from this one. Um, you know, I don't know if they, I, I guess they will produce probably more. I will try this one. Normally yellow, as you are um, wisdomly asking, they, are, they, are, they used to be very weak. So if this happens, you have some other options as well. Like for example, a really great coverage is Chimera. Chimera has a fantastic coverage for the yellow. That's an option. I don't know about this yellow. We will, we will try it now uh, quite soon. So metallics out for the moment. They look Really nice. Los metálicos, sinceramente, me han gustado mucho. Y recordaos, hay un, uh, un oscuro, un old brass, que también parece muy interesante. De hecho, estos colores, el hecho de que haya variación en tonos tan oscuros, cuando normalmente se suelen, a por, se suelen dar siempre pues, eh, oro amarillo, oro verde, oro viejo y poco más, es bastante interesante. Estoy echando um, un poco, eh, quizás el, el, el amarillo este más clarito es el que menos me convence porque tienen menor cobertura. Eh, yo hubiera hecho a lo mejor un dorado también, un, po, un punto más eh, brillante, puestos a, a añadir colores, eh, ya te digo. Pero también, pues bueno, entiendo que al final estos son decisiones un poco en base al gusto del, del que está diseñando los colores. Yo seguramente cogería eh, algunos de estos colores y luego a lo mejor haría una selección un poco diferente para otros. No, no necesariamente significa que mi selección sea mejor ni peor. Simplemente, como prueba de metálicos, no sé si tenéis alguna duda. Uh, from, the, from the point of view of, the, of these metallics, I don't know if you have any doubts. Let's try some inks. Do you want to see the inks? Guys, uh, give me some feedback, please. Let's change the palette a little bit. La tinta roja, muy buena pinta, eh. Me gusta. Red inks looks really, really nice. I really like it. It's difficult to look natural, you know, when you have to repeat the same <laughs> comment in, in both languages. So I hope it doesn't look it, it doesn't look very silly. Hostia, es un chestnut. Mira, qué curioso. It's like a chestnut ink. Wow. Vale, es como una avellana. Este es muy bonito. Este es muy, muy bonito. Como un amber, como un buen amber. Si sí, es más oscurito, es como un marrón oscuro. Uf, que son muy, muy potentes, ¿eh? Las oscuras son muy potentes. The dark ones, they look quite strong. Uf. Eh, son muy potentes, ¿eh? Son muy potentes. De hecho, la morada es muy interesante. Guys, it's very interesting to have a really good purple ink. Really. Because it's almost impossible to mix by yourself. So, 
I will say colors like this, the turquoise, I told you is this one, uh, purple, also oranges, and I will add also some uh, fuchsia. Indeed, those are like my complaints somehow that I'm missing a fuchsia and, um, and a, a, like a intense orange as an ink. Uh, those two, well, vale, este es muy bonito. Este es muy parecido, muy, muy parecido a una tinta de... Um, de Dowler Rowney o de, o de Liquitex. Hay una, hay una Dowler Rowney o una Liquitex, no recuerdo ahora mismo porque de hecho, pues mira, la pro tengo por aquí. Mira, sí, es, una, es parecida a una Liquitex, ¿vale? Muy, muy parecida. Más verdosa el punto. Mira, vamos a probar un poco, vamos a probar las dos. Es curioso que la de, la de Nocturna concentra, se, se aglutina. Es como, si, si os fijáis, el pigmento absorbe mientras que la otra se mantiene más, ¿vale? Y vamos a probarlas luego. Voy a ir probando todas. Primero las pongo en la paleta. First I will place them on the, on the palette. Uh, and then I will check them separately. This is asphalt ink. Es una especie de... Parece un verde muy, muy oscuro, ¿no? Sí, es como un verde muy oscuro. It's like a super dark green ink. It's interesting because it's not the, it's not the, the typical selection of colors. And this deep scarlet is also something that interests me a lot. Wow, vale. I love inks. Inks, inks is life. Interesting, really, really interesting. Okay, so selection, as I said, uh, as a mistake for me, is that I'm, I, I'm willing to see uh, yellows and oranges. And also, I would like to see a version of this on an ink version. On an ink version, that could be really interesting. And to me, that will make it more complete, right? But the ones they have, this is what creates on the uh, absorbent paper on the uh, paper towel, right? As you see, quite quite intense. Let's try them on a um, white paper. Dark red is like a super dark magenta, this scarlet ink. See how it looks like concentrated and how it looks when we dilute and extend. Really intense, that's quite interesting. That, that's really, really interesting. That will be perfect to modify skin tones. Indeed, let's pick skin tone and, and check it. This is like a neutral skin tone. It's a warrior skin. Everybody knows that Warriors has this color on the skin. <coughs> and this is how the, the color is perceived by itself. And this is how it will be changed with an ink. Quite interesting. Just by mixing with ink, you can make some kind of like tan flesh or dwarf flesh. And also it will work um, to make glazes on top and to modify the color. Let's see when it, when it dries. Still not dry, but you can see how I can use it to make interesting tonal variations. So that means that the inks and the, the matte colors, they combine really well. The colors is quite interesting, this kind of like dark cherry, dark purpley, uh, they call it scarlet ink, interesting. Not a usual color for uh, miniature ranges inks. You can find things like this in, in, in other companies, Liquitex or Dowler Roni, but probably they will be also more expensive. So that's also something to take into account. Uh, tened en cuenta que también este tipo de pinturas normalmente cuando están diseñadas por una marca de, de miniaturas están diseñadas para que digamos que tengan el grado de fluidez, el grado de cobertura, el grado de 
eh, efecto satinado o mate más controlado, o sea, no son tan salvajes, ¿vale? Pero son más fáciles de, de trabajar y seguramente más baratas. Terry, hi Terry. So, Scarlet Ink, let's try the red. Red is quite intense. And when we extend it, it lasts a lot and we can also mix, well, dilute it and it keeps the feeling as you can see both are quite different so with here with this one you will have like a neutral red and a cold red you could combine both of them and you can make make easily uh, an ink that is in between so check that like a blood ink or something like this and then you have here a third version of the ink that is also a completely different this is will be like more similar to fuchsia filling obviously with transparency when you are playing with the with the transparency and with the white filling of, of the of the uh, underneath layer right uh, podéis mezclar las, las tintas de hecho mezcla muy bien vale y podéis conseguir otros tonos de rojo diferentes las tintas tienen muy buena pinta y de hecho para veladuras van a ir muy bien porque distribuyen bien son suficientemente finas no rompen que también pasa con algunas tintas eh, si escuché ruido es que hay unos niños eh, dando por saco que vamos a matar en algún momento en fin y los niños se aburren no tienen dónde ir y se dedican a fastidiar streamings bueno, eh, tintas rojas eh, muy bien por ese lado vamos a ver las marrones bueno, tienen una versión anaranjada muy interesante sobre todo cuando abre no me gusta tanto el color inicial pero cuando extiende, ¿vale? y cuando juegas con la transparencia eh, tiene un tono anaranjado muy bonito que seguramente se pueda eh, conseguir un tono intermedio bastante curioso con el rojo ¿veis? vamos a mezclar esta que es eh, Brown Beast Ink con el rojo y mira me saco un rojo más vivo, más cálido, más anaranjado muy fácilmente vale tienen bastante fluidez si veis, fluye muy bien vale, fluye muy bien esto es muy interesante porque me va a aportar esta cualidad a las mezclas, ¿vale? Entonces, eh, las tintas tenéis que ver que tengan intensidad en todos sus estados, no solo la tinta eh, por sí misma, sino también cuando la diluyes tiene que aguantarte y tiene que mantener la, la fluidez. Hay algún tipo de tintas que cuando las mezclas estiras con, la, con el pincel y acabas rompiendo porque digamos que no están, o sea, al estar diluidas pierde esa fluidez y en cierto momento la trazada se rompe. La trazada en este caso dura bastante bien, me gusta. A ver, no es que no haya visto una tinta así en mi vida, pero eh, me, me parece que son, son es una buena elección de tintas. Ya os digo, me está faltando el amarillo y el naranja. Y quizás un verde también potente. Bueno, eh, la tinta marrón... Eh, la tinta marrón es muy, 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 muy oscura de base. Cuando la extiendes, se torna en un marrón. Es como un neutro, es un pelín rojizo, pero es bastante interesante. Esto para hacer cualquier tipo de, eh, por ejemplo, efecto en una, arma, en una armadura, eh, óxido, eh, desgaste, os va a venir bien. De hecho, voy a buscar a ver si tengo alguna medio pintada y la guardeo. Vale, vamos a ver cómo funcionan las tintas. Eh, tengo aquí otras figuras, perdonadme, porque estoy cogiendo figuras un poco random, que las tengo trasteadas de 20.000, de hecho esta ha estado como en 16 demos, le he cambiado la, la cara 16 veces fácilmente, ¿vale? Pero como tiene ya partes que están eh, trabajadas, ¿vale? Pues vamos a ver cómo, cómo se comportan las tintas, en este caso, sobre eh, algo ya pintado, ¿vale? Vale. 
Vamos a coger también un poquito de, por ejemplo, el blanco que tienen de nocturna, ¿vale? Que se llama Pure White. Bueno, tienen, tienen un color bastante interesante y bastante vivo, la verdad. Mezclan bien. Podéis hacer efectos con bastante rapidez. Modificar colores, veis darle una buena hostia de color. Uh, they are quite easy to, to, to mix, they are quite, quite easy to extend uh, by mixing with, uh, with other uh, creamy colors. In this case, it was, that was mixed with, um, uh, with pure white from the same range. 81 viewers and counting down. <laughs> Guys, I cannot go faster. I cannot go faster. I want to test many things and I cannot go faster. So let's see how it works, for example, on top of something uh, that that's a that's a sketch. That, that's a very old sketch, right? This is from a demo. And we have like a dry brush filling here. And let's see how it works, for example, keeping the transparency. So we apply it first. Then we add some dilution and we extend. And let's see if it if it tints uh, the previous stage easily. Es que son muy parecidas a las de a las antiguas de Italia. Muy muy parecidas. Well, you see that you can do washes with it quite easily as well. How instantly it changes the color, but it doesn't add coverage, so it doesn't cover, it doesn't change the, the shape of the brush stroke that you traced before. So for this, it will work quite easily and also to glaze, for example, this part of the... Mm. Mira, no me está agarrando. Ah, vale. Me da culpa, chicos, estaba sucio. Vale, pues por ejemplo, en una zona que ya está un poco trabajada, podéis ver que es muy fácil ir añadiendo cierta tonalidad. ¿Veis qué fácil? You see how easy is to tint an effect. And if you dry in between, super easy. Bueno, muy bien las tintas. Es que son muy parecidas. They are really, really similar to the old uh, Citadel inks, but with more tones. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Let's move on. Indeed, inks, I think, if they, if they will have uh, those colors that they're missing, uh, they will be among my favorites because the problem of some super strong inks like Dowler Roni, that uh, those are my favorite, my personal favorite ones. The problem of these inks is that they are easy. They are not easy to tame. They are not easy to control. So at some point, if you are not used to play with inks, this could be a really nice um, option in order to get introduced into this oversaturated, super saturated uh, world of colors, right? Especially if you're too used to Vallejo or something like this that are quite dull, quite quite flat, quite matte. But, you know, it's another kind of range of paints that's... Those are options, guys. There is nothing worse or better. This is an option depending on your taste and how do you like to paint. Don't forget that. Bien. <coughs> Vamos a, vamos a trastear los colores normales, de hecho lo que voy a hacer es eh, trastearlos directamente sobre una figura, que ya llevamos hablando, o llevo hablando una hora y 34, eh, y creo que va siendo hora un poco de, de toquetear un, una de las figuras de Nocturno. Las tintas muy bien, eh. Ah, mira, se me olvidó probar la turquesa. I forgot to try the turquoise one. 
Let's see it here. Oh. Nah, muy bonita. Muy bonita. Really interesting. It's greenish at the beginning and then the hue turns blue. That means that the pigment that is inside of it has this tendency, like every every color that is in between something like turquoise that turquoise is blue turquoise is green it's something in between it tends to have a specific hue greenish or bluish in this case when you dilute the the hue is revealed is more bluish it's more like a cyan so this could be a very very useful ink that indeed i'm going to use this specifically in our next project on on patreon i will start introducing these inks uh, now that i'm, I'm finishing uh, the, the the Thor, you know, from uh, from Disney Infinity, uh, that should be here. Um, so indeed, if you want to if you want to to check what we have been doing uh, for uh, till now, this is how it goes, and I must finish this probably during this week. So I will start uh, adding or introducing in the mixtures this range of Nocturna. So if you are interested to see it in a real process, in a real step-by-step uh, -step tutorial video tutorial you will be able to check this on our patreon and sincerely i think it's a quite interesting videos already we have released three videos of this explaining the volumetry how it works how to adapt to a cartoony style blah 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 this is quite interesting you know and now we're moving to the technical aspect you know and uh that's why it could be good to try these paints on that figure um uh, during this week so something that will be released probably at the end of this month on patreon or maybe at the beginning of the next one it depends because we have a different series that we are developing at the same time um bueno chicos la voy a probar eh, ahora que estoy acabando estoy rematando el tour que ya va bastante avanzado de hecho sinceramente me flipa va muy bonito eh, y vamos a utilizar estas pinturas porque quiero ver un poco cómo se adaptan a un, a un proceso real ¿Vale? Un proceso eh, que además ya está avanzado, que he trabajado con otro tipo de pinturas que podéis ver en los vídeos previos de Patreon. Si no estáis suscritos, os recomiendo que le deis una, una intentona, que al final son 13 dólares, que es el precio de una hamburguesa del McDonald's, y la hamburguesa del McDonald's es bastante peor que el Patreon, sinceramente. Así que os recomiendo que al menos le deis un, un ojo y, bueno, pues nos apoyéis, y si luego nos gusta, pues os piráis y ya está. Pero al menos echadle un ojo porque yo creo que no os vais a arrepentir. Ahora mismo estamos desarrollando esta, que es una de Infinity, del rango de Infinity de, de Disney, y vamos a probar los colores de Nocturna en el siguiente vídeo que seguramente lanzaremos a final de mes o a principio del mes próximo, ¿vale? En fin, voy a hacer una ronda de preguntas. Eh, hasta el momento hemos probado las tintas, hemos probado los metálicos, no sé qué os parecen. <coughs> Hi guys, I'm going to make like a round of questions. I don't know if you have any doubts. Um, sorry for being a little bit slow with the explanations, but you know, I have to speak in, in English, I have to speak in Spanish, it's not so easy mixing both. Uh, we are now 80 viewers, uh, one left from the last comment I did. <laughs> um, I, I hope this is being useful for the moment. Uh, for the moment, the... the, the um, my conclusions are quite good. They are really, really, really similar to the old Citadel, the old uh, coat de arms uh, paints. Really, really similar. Um, just from the, the feeling. The color selection, I really like it indeed. It's a pity that I cannot show you right now all the colors I have here because I have like 30 different pots. And uh, you, if you have just arrived you can check it at uh, the beginning of, I, I show almost all the pots one by one and now we are going to apply this on a miniature uh, from the nocturnal range which will be um, that one okay um, I want to check your questions first I don't know if you have any doubts if everything is clear if this is being useful just give me your thoughts uh, that help me because I'm alone right now I cannot uh, check the the chat so much hola Pablo que pasa que tal tío <clears throat> uh, Mark Fisher, can you try mixing a blue or, or green metallic? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Two seconds. ¿Dónde cojones el puesto? Vale. Like for example, that one that is like Iron Fist. It has it has like the perception of a 
bluish feeling at the beginning, but I, I, I feel that probably it can be the diluent. So maybe when we mix it, it's like a neutral tone, something like a chain mail or something similar. Yeah, indeed, it's like a, it's similar to a chain mail, quite similar. Really intense. Let's see how it covers, for example, here. Well, it's a decent coverage. It's, it, it, it's not the best coverage ever, but it works quite well. So probably in two layers, you can cover directly from black. You could mix it with black and it will help you to cover first. Like for example, if we use this purple black, let's see, which is a, it's interesting because you can perceive the black and it's quite dense. Oh, it's super black, it's super purple. It's, it's super, super purple. It's like a really dark purple, that's interesting. So now you have a metallic purple. They mix well between themselves. And to create a green, but if you want to modify the, the metallics to create your own uh, metallic tones, I suggest you to mix it with inks. That will be better than mix it with the regular colors because inks works better with metallic pigments. So let's mix it with uh, with some uh, yeah some green ink for example. Let's mix it with the turquoise that I really like it. Vamos a mezclar un poquito. Vamos a hacer un. Me han pedido hacer un 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 green un metálico verdoso o azulado. Bueno, fácil, ¿no? Y seguramente cubra mejor sobre la capa ya aplicada. Concentro porque si arrastro todavía no ha secado la capa previa, ¿vale? Tienden a tardar un poco en secar. Os recomiendo que dejéis tiempo entre capa y capa. Uh, they tend to, to take a while until they dry completely. So I suggest you to move uh, or to wait a little bit between layer and, and layer to go for the second layer, right? You can move on and work somewhere else, but quite easily you can make uh, metallic co uh, metallic colors, you know, by mixing with, with inks, especially like metallics with inks, they, they, will, they, they work really, really great uh, both together. <clears throat> Are the inks as good as scale intensity? <clears throat> That's a tricky question. Well, to me, and being part of the designer crew of uh, scale intensity, I have not tried the new ones, to be fair. And I guess that they are interesting, they are nice. I don't know what are the tones. I have to check. I will ask uh, Scale 75 to give us some inks. This one looks a little bit stronger. Scale looks a little bit thinner the pigment so maybe scale for being more subtle for being for making like glazes on top of a finished face where you can uh, but well this one works very well as well I mean it will be difficult to, to choose from the colors sincerely for example that red is better than uh, scale 75 uh, red ink for the red then the chestnut ink it looks quite similar I will have to check them uh, together to decide but both works uh, better. So at the end, the option that you have to, to, to choose is between, I don't know, the price, the quantity, and then how you feel it, because sometimes you feel more comfortable with a certain brand than any other, because the, the, the kind of pigment they are using is more appropriate for your way of painting. And I think it's wrong to say that one company or one brand is better than the other clearly, especially if both of them are, are good enough, because sincerely, both of them are good enough. Indeed, when we created the first in intensity range, uh, we, were, uh, we were seeking, we were looking for achieve a very a feeling that looks similar to the old Citadel range, you know, that was in my memory. And that's what I wanted to uh, to achieve. And in the scale 75, in the case of scale 75, in intensity, 
uh, for example, with the chestnut, we did it. It was fantastic. The blue is a fantastic ink indeed. There is not a dark blue, or at least I don't see it in this range, which this is interesting from the um, intensity range. I really like the green. It was fantastic green as well. But for example, I feel I regret about how we did the yellow and the red. That Those two are colors that I'm not very happy. I'm not very proud of, of the final result. I don't know if they have fixed this in the new ranges of intensity because I know they are releasing right now. So um, no idea about that. I cannot, I will check it uh, most likely. And, and these ones I really like, especially the reds are fantastic. The turquoise is fantastic. Brown is really good, but I am missing some colors, which at the end, maybe you, if you are missing these colors as well, you can go to other companies like Liquitex or Dauleroni. And at the end, every painter has a bunch of many different companies. And then you take, you select the ones you like the most from each range. Sí, me falta olive ink. Es por no probar todas, porque tengo como 40 pinturas. Si pruebo todas, nos tiramos hasta mañana. Eric Swinson, how do the inks compare to Dauleroni or Scale 75? I think that they are str stronger than Scale 75 in terms of, of, of vibrancy of the pigment. Um, but uh, less than Dauleroni, so Dauleroni will be like the top. Also, the more difficult to tame, you know, it's like uh, hardcore stuff. Uh, Scale 75 are quite accessible, quite easy to use, but maybe not so intense for mixtures. And this is something in between. Uh, and Liquitex as an ink, sincerely, I don't like them so much. Me personally, they are very transparent, too much sometimes. And the strength of the pigment is not as vibrant as Dauleroni. Also, Dauleroni is slightly more satin than what most of the people are used to. So that's a personal option, guys. It's, that's the reason why we cannot say pick this or, or pick that. You have to decide by yourself. We are testing them. Definitely, th these are good colors. Uh, and these are colors that looks very uh, similar to these old colors from the 90s and the 2000s that if you belong to this generation as me, uh, <laughs> those memories were fantastic. So I will probably give them a try, especially you will see them in the, in the Patreon videos. Uh, indeed, this month I will just use this. Uh, maybe always I have my uh, fetiche, my fetish fetish uh, colors, the ones that I like the most, um, that I will introduce and mix so that, that then you can see how they work with any other colors, but they will do this on a, pro, uh, proper, um, a proper uh, process uh, on Patreon, right? <clears throat> Mali, hey, Mali, Mali, you are, you are the boss. You are the boss of the, you are the king on the north. <clears throat> King in the north. <clears throat> Pasco have to go. It's not boring, but I have to drive another three hours. Take care, bro. And send me a WhatsApp when you arrive home safe. <laughs> See you. Uh, Abama la boy. Hola de nuevo. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Mañana. Vale, vale. Ah, vale. Muchas gracias. Sí, sube, sube. Ir subiendo. Ir subiendo. Ir subiendo. Ir compartiendo lo que vais haciendo a través de... Oh, oh o inspiraos en la academia o, o basándoos un poco en lo que aprendéis en la academia, pues la verdad es que nos ayuda mucho que nos compartáis en Instagram porque es la única manera de crecer y, y, y no crecemos, somos un poco paradillos. Entonces, bueno, si nos ayudáis, mejor. Eh, muchas veces han comparado tintas con las antiguas de Guinness Workshop con las de Scale, Andrea, ahora estas, ¿cuáles que se parecen más? Estas. A las de Guinness Workshop, estas, sin duda. Sin duda, ninguna. De hecho, te diré, Pablo, las de Scale 75... Eh, cuando nosotros las creamos, la intención era hacer, hacerlas muy parecidas a Citadel. Y de hecho, en tonalidad sí acertamos con algunas. Porque, por ejemplo, la Chestnut de, de. que no me acuerdo cómo se llama, la Avellana de, de Scale es la hostia. O sea, es muy buena. Pero tienen una, un rango de transparencia mayor. No tienen tanta potencia como las antiguas de Citadel. Que tú, que seguramente tendrás eh, pinturas antiguas todavía vivas, puedes ver que era un pigmento muy concentrado. Yo tengo muchas. Y, y bueno, pues todavía sigo utilizando la, las de Games Workshop, antiguas de los 90. Eh, en escala intentamos eso a nivel de tono, pero a nivel de pigmento no era el mismo pigmento, era un pigmento diferente también, basado un poco en el tipo de cliente que compraba Scale, que buscaba algo pues, muy fácil de manejar, eh, que no, no estaba acostumbrado al satinado, quería cosas mate, 
con lo cual las tintas tenían que ser algo un poco comedido y que nos sirvieran sobre todo para veladuras porque el cliente medio de eh, las pinturas tipo Scali Vallejo basa su vida eh, entera en, en velar. Entonces, bueno, pues era un poco... Eh, eso eran como las premisas, ¿no? Al diseñar esas, esas tintas. Estas tintas son más potentes. Yo no las compararía con Dowler Rowney. Tendría que probarlas más, ¿eh? Porque a lo mejor me sorprenden. O sea, no las he probado face to face. Las Dowler Rowney tienden a satinar y son muy, muy potentes, pero también son más difíciles de, de, de utilizar. De hecho, eh, parchean mucho más. Eh, si no controlas bien... Si estás utilizando una media veladura o una dilución de un 70-80%, eh, las Dowler Rowney, eh, ojo, porque te pueden arruinar un efecto en una cara. Por ejemplo, si estás consiguiendo una, una carnación en un pómulo... Cuidado. Entonces, esto es una cosa intermedia. A mí me parecen muy interesantes, ¿eh? O sea, no, os lo digo con total sinceridad. Lo, lo que es verdad es que me faltan algunos colores que yo personalmente pondría. De hecho, bueno, pues, yo que sé, acosada a Jesús y que haga naranja y, y, y amarillo. Y a lo mejor Jesús está ahora viéndome y dice, ¿será capullo este tío si tengo amarillo y naranja? Y no, y no lo ha visto. Mirad el Kickstarter también. Yo no os he descrito el Kickstarter. Eh, esto es nuevo para mí, acabo de verlo. Eh, mirad bien el Kickstarter porque a lo mejor dice que hay amarillo y yo no lo tengo aquí. Tampoco me han traído, no sé cuántas van a sacar, no sé si van a sacar 80 pinturas y yo tengo aquí 40, ¿vale? Entonces, yo estoy testeando lo que tengo, ¿vale? Lo que tengo. Pero se comporta muy bien y sobre todo mezcla muy bien con metálicos, que a mí eso me parece muy interesante porque todo esto tenéis que entender que va por modas. Eh, ahora está de moda el no metálico, eh, bueno, desde hace 15 años está de moda el no metálico, estamos en esa progresión, tiene mucha lógica porque la pintura hoy en día es una pintura ilustrada, con lo cual el no metálico es lo que, lo que hace que esa eh, pintura parezca un cuadro, que parezca un 2D, ¿no? que tenga ese, ese rollo eh, más de vistas concretas, pero para ciertas cosas el metálico es muy interesante, de hecho para pintar ejércitos no tiene ningún sentido que pintéis no metálicos porque vais a tardar 10 años más, mientras que aquí puedes hacer una mezcla o puedes pintar con metálicos teñidos como he demostrado, o eh, con un concepto de no metálico en cuanto a dónde ponemos la, eh, cómo interpretamos la volumetría que por cierto el vídeo del Thor es un vídeo específico de volumetría que tenéis del mes anterior y que me parece la hostia sinceramente lo he explicado en digital y luego aplicado en pintura echadle un ojo si no lo habéis hecho si estáis en el Patreon y si no estáis en el Patreon pues es un motivo más porque realmente es muy útil ¿vale? <coughs> eh, Víctor eh, bueno eh, chao tío eh, que, que apro aproveche <ríe> vale, pues mañana nos ves eh, pues mira Pablo si, si, si lo que te preocupa es que se parezcan a Games Warsaw, se parecen mucho ¿eh? Eh, Oney, ¿tienes algo que ver con las nuevas tintas de escala 75? no, no las he diseñado yo eh, ¿qué tal la estabilidad de los botes? los blancos que tienes ya son los definitivos no lo sé no lo sé, yo los botes que tengo aquí son botes de testeo el bote, el bote bueno es como los de P3 que dentro de lo que cabe, estos botes eh, mantienen mucho más la pintura. Es un normal. <risa> bueno, mantienen mucho más la pintura que, por ejemplo, los botes, yo qué sé, los de, los de plástico, estos antiguos de Citadel, que eran un horror. Los nuevos, la verdad es que no los he probado, no puedo, no puedo decir nada. Pero, pero funcionan muy bien, ¿eh? O sea, estos botes mantienen bastante bien el. El, col el, el color no, no, se, no se seca con tanta facilidad siempre que tengáis botes de cristal el cristal al final seca la pintura <coughs> eh, las eh, Adrián Bononi a mí todavía me, com me complica manejar las tintas Liquitex pero me encantan cómo quedan es que el problema es que esos son pigmentos hipersaturados entonces si no estás acostumbrado eh, te, a lo mejor te interesa una transición a lo mejor coges esto y te parece algo un pelín intermedio porque a nivel de acabado va a ser similar pero a nivel de, de pigmento, de cómo manejas el pigmento, seguramente te resulte más fácil eh, manejar esto. Igual que las de Scale, todavía, todavía más en el sentido de que es un pigmento un pelín menos eh, potente y más eh, translúcido, por decirlo de alguna manera. Es difícil hablar de conceptos eh, cuando no soy químico, evidentemente. Uh, Terry Cowell, I don't know if you have covered this already. Are they glossy? It's fine if they are, but if so, do they react well to medium? No, they don't look, they don't look glossy. They don't look glossy. No, no, no. Uh, I have uh, mixed them with uh, metallics and with uh, matte colors, I think. Probably, if not, I will do it uh, afterwards. But um, let's check the, the finish. Obviously, this is a, this is a white paper. Um, so the result will never be as obvious, right, as in a, in a figure. But the, the result is quite, is quite matte in this case. 
and this is something in between that has certain iridescency. I don't know if you can check it uh, with the light, but visually here in, in real, it looks this iridescency that's mixed ink uh, plus uh, metallic. That's pure metallic. That's metallic diluted, right? And this keeps the, the shiny effect, but the inks tends to go more matte. I guess they are not ultra matte, they are something in between, you know? So in this case, if you're interested on, on an ink that is not glossy, that could be also an option. So, okay, we have, we have um, finished with the questions for the moment. Uh, so if you have more questions, well, you say, Abiyad Madar, hey Alfonso, any chance you have some P3 and go there and paint in hand? Would love to see how they compare since they seem they're being manufactured by uh, HMG LTD. Well, to be fair, P3, some colors I love them, like coal black, it's amazing. But some other colors, they have no coverage at all. <laughs> so um, I don't have many P3s because it's not, a, it's not a brand that I find comfortable for myself. Um, and Code Arms, same thing. Not not same thing, but cold code arms. I don't have them because they don't they don't sell in uh, Spanish shops normally. So I know cold arms because they were used uh, in France when we went to the Golden Demon uh, in the 2000, 2003, 4, 5, 6. and we found those pots on uh, Jeremy Bonamant Studio, Alan Carrasco, uh, Benoit Menard, and I remember those those paints from this uh from this moment but in spanish shops we don't have this range or at least i've never seen it um so i cannot i, I cannot compare here but it looks quite similar to code the arms and it looks quite similar to old citadel range this is what i can tell you from my experience right now sorry for not being able to compare but i can compare with any other brand except of these two because i can i don't consume uh, p3 not because of anything special just because some of the colors that I really like it, the coverage was not as as I ex expected and I I wanted more more coverage, let's say, right? So let's move to the to the miniature and let's see how it works uh, quite quickly. So we're going to pick some tones like randomly, like this gray for the stone, uh, maybe this color for the for the skeleton. Uh, the girl will have, uh, let's try, I don't know what you want to see, but maybe a combination of those two and, um, and the skin, let's try the skin, will be this one, that one, and maybe if we have time, some clear uh, flesh as well. So, let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> Let's see how they work. I'm gonna take this granite stone. I'm taking from the bottom to see how is the thickest uh, version of the pigment. This is metallic that I applied uh, before, it's already dry. And has a nice coverage. Indeed, I'm going to mix it maybe with brown. Let's, let's return to the original display for videos, for video tutorials. There. Okay, so the gray is mixed, in this case is mixed with a, with a brown ink. I don't remember what it was. The feeling is creamy, it extends well, es cremoso, extiende bien. Tiene un buen, una buena cobertura, pero no es eh, la mayor cobertura del mundo. O sea, hay pinturas que cubren más. 
pero está bien, o sea, en dos capas no tenéis que tener ningún tipo de problema, se extienden bien. Eso también tenéis que tener en cuenta que eh, no hay una pintura perfecta, eh, al final todas eh, carecen de algo y, y por eso eh, los eh, pintores, artistas o como queráis llamarnos, mezclamos eh, pigmentos, porque si no tendríamos solo una, una línea y ya está. Yo al final, cuando mezclo diferentes eh, marcas, eh, pues es por algo. O sea, tiene un sentido, no es, eh, no es porque me apetezca coleccionar pinturas, que también me gusta coleccionar pinturas, vamos. Me puedo coger un poquito del negro, que de hecho es que tenemos un negro eh, morado, pero no hay un negro normal. Entonces no sé muy bien... Sí, ah, sí, sí, está, sí. Aquí, está aquí, está aquí, está aquí. Soy un capullo, está aquí. Pure Black, ¿cómo no iba a estar? Si está el Pure White, pues tendrá que estar el Pure Black. Ay, mira, este es Virgen. Este lo vamos... This is Virgin. This is something that we are going to open. Life opening. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Bueno, pues tiene buena pinta. Sí, es un negro muy intensito. Y voy a hacer eh, bueno pues un, uh, unas capas base a casi todo. Lo que pasa es que ya me vais a ver eh, ir fundiendo colores, ir mezclando colores. Eh, en caso de que algún día me pinte esta figura, eh, pues ya tengo una base que no es regular. What I'm going to do is to make some base coats, some capas base, which is uh, basically uh, adding like flat colors. But in this case not a flat color that uh, has no variation instead of uh, making variations already so then in case that i move uh, forward in the future and that i start uh, i decide to paint this maybe for a patreon video uh, i will have a nice base with variations with tonal variation everywhere especially on the on the uh, or, um, natural elements like the stone because the stone is not just gray and that's it you know it has more other colors i also want you to see how fast you can work with uh, with something like this to me that's mandatory in order to test so, uh, paints which is that i can apply the paint Uh, easily and I can ap apply the paint uh, fast es bonita la, la figura es una muchacha aquí todo triste ¿Eh? está triste porque no la llevo el WhatsApp que estaba esperando. Pero he de decir que me alegro de que haya alguien que no produzca tías que simplemente sean siliconadas, ¿vale? Porque ya está bien de que todas las tías que se produzcan en el mundo de la figura sean tías con tetas gordas eh, de goma. No tengo nada en contra de las tetas gordas, ni mucho menos, y mucho menos en contra de las tetas de goma, tampoco. Pero, joder... Eh, una pirata también puede ser una mujer normal, ¿no? Digo yo, no todas tienen que ser eh, actrices porno o, o, o parecer eh, bailarinas de striptease. Y no lo digo de ninguna mala manera, que espero que me entendáis. Así que es de agradecer que haya eh, versiones de figuras femeninas pues con cierta historia, narrativa y sensibilidad. A mí esto me gusta y eso que no soy... Eh, a mí este tipo de temática no me atrae personalmente, ¿vale? Pero creo que eh, da mucho más juego a contar una historia. Porque yo qué sé, esta puede estar triste, pues, triste, pues eso, porque no ha aprobado la selectividad, porque no la ha llegado el WhatsApp del novio, o porque, yo qué sé, la han echado del curro, ¿sabes? En fin. Os tengo que dar algún motivo para que me, me, me critiquéis, porque si no lo, lo hago demasiado light. Y eso es porque David ha llegado. Porque antes he hecho un streaming que flipas, ¿eh? Sí, ¿te la has jodido o qué? Le he jodido. <risa> <risa> ya he cagado. Bueno, en fin, vale. Uh, so, what we're doing is basically 
creating a like a brief pattern for uh, making stone effect uh, testing the colors the colors in this case the regular colors they don't dry instantly you know you have you have time as you can see you have time to keep on going that's interesting in order to play with different techniques like wet blending for example or to mix and, and create some textures quite easily um, even more even you can add some inks for example that could be interesting uh, to make like variations like this for example that you can instantly modify imagine that i want to make make the the stone more greenish then i can introduce it first and then add some of these stones somewhere else so the colors they mix quite well among themselves and yes there are some some stones that are green believe me stones are not just uh, the gray tone that against worship uh, propose you you know stones have many different uh, colors and patterns and different tonalities and so i suggest you to try you know to to play with colors to enjoy to observe as well Let's try this, um, no, this is silver. Let's see if I find a creamy version, like uh, some kind of sand. I saw one before, and I don't know what it is right now. Mm, it's like, well, we have this sand gray that could be an interesting addition. This is similar to ¿cómo se llama el color este de workshop que era como el graveyard earth? Sí. ¿es este? ¿es este? ¿muy parecido? sí, es parecido yo creo. I think it's similar to graveyard earth or something like this It's important to see how the, the bright colors react because most of the companies, they produce um, like off-whites, whites, cream colors that has no coverage. So that's interesting also. And I guess that the, I guess that the, um, la parca, the death is also uh, stone, so we can introduce maybe with a different tone. Let's see if we can find, I don't know, like e evil flesh, this kind of pastel brown. We will be using uh, these paints uh, during the whole month um, on our Patreon alongside with other companies. So you will be able to see how how we test them, uh, com comparing and mixing with Scale 75, with Vallejo, with Chimera, uh, with Golden Acrylics, with Dowler Roni, with Liquitex. And I think it will be a very interesting um, journey this month to see uh, how we can apply the different brands and and what they can offer to our paintings 
Uh, so stay tuned because I think that you will be able to clarify many of your doubts. Mira, mira por favor las preguntas o los comentarios. Now David is here, so if you want to make any comments, things will go much faster because David can ask me uh, your questions uh, while I am painting. So shoot your questions. Any question I will answer. la pregunta de diferencias y similitudes entre Quimera y esas pinturas? Eh, Quimera, uh, difference between, uh, en eh, español? español sí. Diferencias. Like, guys, people are asking in Spanish, like, for example, they ask about the difference between Quimera and, and these paints. If you want to ask similar questions in English, please, I mean, take the time to write because uh, that's the way that you can take more advantage of this free stream, uh, streaming and And you know, I'm here to answer your questions. Uh, now I, I answer in Spanish, obviously, because the question was done in, in Spanish. Um, a ver, eh, Quimera, eh, Quimera tiene más densidad. Eh, me da la sensación de que tiene un pigmento un pelín más fuerte eh, y tiene mucha más limitación de color. Entonces, depende. Si vas a mezclar, eh, a lo mejor yo los colores más primarios, ya te digo, todavía no los he probado, para decirte, pero miría por quimera. Si vas a hacer eh, progresiones más lineales o vas a seguir más eh, una receta, no, no, no hablo necesariamente de copiar algo, sino simplemente de que pues, eh, tengas claro que vas a utilizar X tonos, eh, pues hombre, la, la gama de nocturna desde luego amplia es. Y, eh, y luego depende, es más una sensación, para mí es un poco más eh, el tema de la viscosidad, lo que lo que me haría decidirme por una o por la otra. Las de Quimera trazan menos que estas, eh, cubren más. Cuando digo que trazan menos es que se te seca antes la trazada. Eh, pero ya os digo, tampoco las he probado, o sea, no soy, no soy Einstein, entonces tengo que probarlas más tiempo, ¿sabes? Yo creo que combinaría las dos, sinceramente. De hecho, soy muy fan de Quimera, también entended que la idea original es mía, entonces eh, es un poco difícil ir en contra de la idea original porque eh, la idea original de Quimera es mezclar y yo sabéis que estoy muy a favor de mezclar, pero si es verdad y esto es una cosa que eh, como autocrítica eh, me pasa en proyectos, eh, sobre todo proyectos que se enquistan, sobre todo proyectos eh, largos, Muchas veces cuando tiras mucho de mezcla, cuando mezclas mucho, eh, te envicias con la paleta. Y es difícil eh, de repente salir y decir eh, cambio de colores, ¿no? Porque los, digamos que utilizas mucho, todo queda muy, muy orgánico, todo queda con mucho sentido. Pero sí es verdad que, que a veces he eh, hecho en falta eh, tonalidades más específicas y, y consistentes o, o estables, ¿no? Que, ¿no? que no tenga que mezclar 70 veces, que, que al final pues es un poco la pega. Entonces... Sí que he echado de menos durante muchos años eh, esa sensación de que me daban las Citadel, ¿no? Eh, las Citadel antiguas, ¿eh? Hablo de las antiguas que, te, ya os digo, las, las nuevas no las, no las critico, simplemente es que no las he probado. Y las contras estas, pues ya no las, las he probado menos. Eh, pero bueno, las probaremos también, a ver qué, a ver qué tal, porque dicen que, que las tiras sobre la, pintura, sobre la figura y, y te sale la figura pintada, y eso hay que verlo. Porque entonces me voy a poner a hacer bueno, yo sé, me haré mi ejército, ese que siempre soñé, de, eh, de, de Eldars. Pero, eh, ya te digo, las quimeras, pues sí, tienen un pigmento muy potente, 
eh, la trazabilidad, la fluidez es menor. De hecho, si os fijáis, eh, en los vídeos de Patreon, la, las de Quimera las, las suelo tunear. Siempre les añado algo. ¿no? Entonces, eh, al final yo creo que no es comparar, sino probar, ver qué se adapta más a vuestra manera de entender la pintura y de trabajar, y luego... Eh, pues mezclar, mezclar propiedades. Vale, vamos a colorear la chica. Una chica triste. Vamos a coger esta progresión. Vale. Evan Smith, how is compared to P3 and Vallejo? Uh, more intense than Vallejo, more vibrant than Vallejo, for sure. Uh, maybe not more than Vallejo game color, but much less satin than game color. Game color is a little bit wild sometimes. Indeed, that's the thing that I don't like about Vallejo game color, that sometimes some colors are like, and, and that has better coverage as well. Uh, in comparison with P3, I don't have a, like a big experience with P3, to be fair. Uh, only a few colors, and some of them I like them a lot, like Cold Black. But some others, they have no coverage, and I really didn't like them. I like uh, paints that they can use with full coverage at some point if needed. Because uh, people are too used to glaze too much, but glazing is going against the properties of the... I mean, I'm not saying that glazing is wrong. Don't misunderstand my words, okay? Like uh, I, I, I make this, I use this technique constantly, glazing. But glazing, you cannot paint everything by glazes because then the result will be will be always very weak and very uh, with a lack of vibrancy because you are basing everything on dilution. This is like if you have milk and you dilute it with water, you know, it doesn't take like milk anymore. It tastes like something else. So with paints, uh, sometimes you have to be able to use the paint like how it comes from the pot. And in this case, uh, these ones has a, an advantage uh, on top of uh, of uh, Vallejo, because I'm talking about especially the regular uh, paints from Vallejo, you know, that are more focused on other kind of painting, more like the military painting. Uh, however, some of them are really useful. At the end, this depends on your taste, how you like to paint, uh, what kind of techniques you want to use, uh, what's the dilution you feel comfortable with, and many other aspects that obviously you cannot take a decision. I give you this as an example, like I was thinking about uh, buying the, la uh, the Surface Pro um, the, from Microsoft and the uh, Mac Pro from Apple. And my intention was to bring it uh, to have a like a tablet or a version of a tablet that, that could be uh, used also as a laptop. Um, and to be able to draw, because I travel, as you may know, I travel a lot uh, and I want to draw in those uh, in those trips, you know, most of the times to finish some uh, commissions, some some work, some um, like concept art for companies and so on. Like now I'm working with a very interesting concept art for fair miniatures. Well, the point of this is uh, that when I was checking all the videos, you know, uh, at the end, I took the decision to go for the uh, Surface Pro from Microsoft because uh, I was afraid that all the videos that I saw, uh, they told me that if I wanted a, a laptop, Surface Pro was better, that the, the, the one from Mac was more like a, like a full tablet, you know, and at the end, I took the Surface Pro and now I regret because I should focus only on the dry drawing side and sincerely when i when i tested procreate on my mac pro uh i was surprised by by how easy it, it was to trace and to work and how the display of that program was much more intuitive and easy to work in a tablet than uh, let's say photoshop that i i love photoshop but not in a tablet you know because i need more space so at the end, 
you know, that's a very personal decision. It depends on what are you looking for. And that's why I can give you my opinion of my feelings. Obviously, this is the first time I try them and I still have to get used to it, you know. Um, but uh, then you have to try yourself and I cannot give you a good tip if I really don't know what's your kind of painting, how you how you trace, how you paint, how much you dilute, how is the kind of process you like to, to follow. Um, I always recommend to have a little bit of everything to be able to mix different properties and sometimes you want the coverage of this one, sometimes you need the satin feeling of that one and you, sometimes you need I don't know, the strength of this one or the vibrancy or the fluidity, different properties that we are constantly explaining on our Patreon videos, you know, that makes uh, the decision more efficient somehow. I don't know if I answer to your question or not. Um, so, uh, Mark Fisher, so far with the paints you have used, would you use this in your day-to-day -day painting? Yes. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, because now, for example, I'm fo I, I will focus, I will leave uh, this until it dries and I will, while I'm speaking, I will mix or, or go for the, for the skin tones. You know that I don't like to work with pre-made skin tones, but I want to try the, uh, these ones as well. So let's go. Um, now I'm trying to move to a more regular paint job for many reasons. Also because uh, sometimes, you know, you get bored. Well, skin tone here doesn't cover directly. So let's find an intermediate tone. In this case, I'm gonna mix it with a, with some kind of black. This will create a dark uh, tinted gray, like a, like a pastel brown uh, that will be probably better for uh, coverage purposes, yes. And that will be just my first uh, stage. So what I was saying is that I want to move somehow to uh, a more regular way of painting for the moment, you know, just because I've been experimenting for many years and I also want to uh, make some, well, I have, indeed I have in the workbench um, an interesting, um, this is something I don't like that much that the coverage of the of the flesh tone or at least I'm mixing I'm mixing uh, this flesh tone with the with the black the coverage is not that good in this uh, at this moment um, nothing that you cannot resolve with two layers or with mixing with a little bit more of the uh, black but I have to tell you my experience or at least what I'm feeling right now again this is just my momentary experience these things you have to check them by yourself because maybe uh, you have to get used to the paints you know the dilution that you need each paint is slightly different and they have to be treated in a different way so what i was saying is that i i, I would like to try these colors because i will i have been trying to let's say move to a more step-by-step -step painting for a while also to show this on some certain videos because i, I don't want to monopolize the, the Patreon with my style or with my own taste. I want to show you every different way of painting, right? Also, the step-by-step -step one, you know, because it's something acceptable, you know, you can, maybe it's, it's better for you, or maybe not for you, but for your friend is better, this way of painting, right? And the problem I have found is that I always tend to, to blend uh, a lot because, uh, because this is, or to blend, to mix a lot, because this is my personal taste, you know? Uh, and with these paints, the good thing is that the range is varied, varied enough so that I can, uh, I can clearly create a logical process without being tempted to mix that much, you know? Do I want to recommend that? Not really, because I recommend to, pick, to mix and I really believe on mixing as a painter. But if you want to go faster or you want to colorize, because let's say you want to paint an army and you have uh, 1,500 million figures to paint, well, then uh, maybe you need something with more coverage. As I see, some colors has better coverage than others, which is something uh, quite usual as well. Um, in this case, for example, Chimera has a better coverage, uh, or that's, that's my feeling but also they don't have these colors so 
that's up to you. Indeed, the color is, is a color that I, I like a lot. It's a very tan version of a flesh tone. We are going to leave this dry for a while. And you see me, uh, I'm already using the, uh, purely the, the flesh tone for uh, the light areas of the frontal uh, view. It's difficult to paint fast uh, something like this because the, the sculpt work is fantastic, it's very subtle, and somehow at this point I'm ruining it, you know? Um, so because I want to move uh, to a more, um, more refined uh, work as well, I want to cover it quickly. Uh, and then I will also try some inks on the uh, on the stone that is already dry to see how it works as a glaze as well. I add some more white because I want some more contrast so that you can see how this works. We're 79 survivors. Thank you guys. Muchas gracias chicos. Disculpadme que esté hablando a veces tanto en inglés. Eh, a los demás les pido disculpas por hablar tanto en español en otras ocasiones. No me resulta fácil eh, mudarme de un, de un idioma a otro constantemente. Así que a veces descanso hablando más minutos de la cuenta, os pido disculpas. Mark Fisher te pregunta en inglés que si les usarías en tu día a día de pintura. Sí, es lo que acabo de responder. Ah, vale, pero no Como veis, mi, mi compañero sí. y socio... Eh, es que tiene una otra cosa. Está mirando las mejoras escenas de Gina Jameson. Me gustan mucho los, los cremas y los blancos. I really like the creamy colors and the whites. Uh, they work really well. Okay. So. I was waiting until the flesh uh, started to dry. I will use, let's see this known flesh. Por aquí dicen que me ignora, David. No me ignora, lo que pasa es que soy muy pesado. Eso es una realidad. Entonces. Estoy haciendo un hombre en realidad. Exactamente. <coughs> la cobertura de la piel no me acaba de. de convencer tanto. Aquí sí se parece más a P3. The coverage of the skin tone looks more like what I remember from P P3, uh, and it doesn't have such a good coverage. So <clears throat> maybe it depends, you know, it depends on the thickness of the of the paint that you uh, used to, to paint. At the end, as I said at the beginning, uh, it's it's very usual that the designer of the paints uh, somehow search for the kind of the uh, viscosity or transparency or um, kind of pigment that he enjoys you know uh, 
So in this case, my way of painting is too aggressive, you know, and for this, but you know, if you want to do something more controlled, more like, you know, more like more diluted, more like a glazy, glazing uh, process somehow, uh, that will be maybe more for you. If you want to go really uh, harsh, then it will be good if you mix it, because maybe if you like the colors, and maybe you can mix it with something with better coverage. Muy bonita. Model is really nice, really beautiful, really natural uh, folds and wrinkles. Uh, the anatomy is great. Congratulations to the sculptor. It's a very natural feeling. Mira, voy a utilizar, voy a mezclar con algo de otra marca que tenga un poco más de cobertura para que veáis. I'm going to use something from another company that has a little bit more coverage so you can see how they can interact and you can pick the tones that you like because in certain terms of tones, I really think that the selection is fantastic. But maybe with a little bit more coverage, depending on your, how aggressive you are painting, you know, maybe mixing with something from another company could, could work as well. So, so. Tenemos blanco de quimera, voy a cambiar solo eso. Ahí, pero no sé dónde estará. Creo que está. No estaba ahí. No, no lo conseguí ese otro día. Está claro que hay que decir la quimera que nos manda más color. Quimera, mándanos más colores. I'm going to try to cover uh, quickly certain areas because I want to check them in a glazing version. So that's the reason why I'm painting uh, fast to, to try to cover, uh, you know, general volumes at least to be able to uh, work a little bit because we I have been explaining a lot and testing them um, on the paper as well in terms of how they look like but also I want to check them in different shapes not only uh, with direct paint because I assume that also most of you will probably <clears throat> go for a more glazed uh, techniques or glazing techniques. Uh, voy a intentar cubrir rápidamente 
para que veáis un poco cómo funcionan en una versión más de, de veladura. También he de decir que evidentemente la figura es muy bonita, pero es un poco compleja para un, un streaming. Porque es muy delicada. Esto hubiera sido más fácil de probar sobre una figura más, eh, más toscota, más grandota, más con más eh, elementos abiertos áreas más grandes y demás, bueno, en fin vale. voy a hacer un rango de preguntas mientras, una ronda de preguntas mientras eh, mientras seca y ahora vamos a aplicarlo de una manera un pelín más sutil trazadas del rojo bueno, el rojo o del just to remind you that I'm just uh, placing colors on top I'm just colorizing quickly I'm just sketching quickly to see how the paint uh, reacts the intention of this video is not to paint something uh, impressive at all it's a pity because the miniature looks fantastic but I want to check things quite quickly indeed let's check how they blend in a wet blending Darker colors has more coverage. You can take this into account. And they last enough to dry, to make a blending, to make a wet blending. They work for this. Let's move to the stone because I want to, to check some of the inks over a texture. Turquoise ink as well. And mix it with some black as well. Bully dice que has perdido peso en las dos últimas semanas. Gracias, Bully. Thank you, Bully. It's because they don't they don't let me eat. They just keep me painting forever. tonalidades van muy bien las tintas están muy bien ¿eh? de hecho te diría que es lo que más me, a mí personalmente para mi manera de pintar inks they really work really really well indeed for my way of painting inks will be a, a great addition I'm gonna change the, the brush to something smaller and we're going to pick let's say this album flesh to check mix it with known flesh 
So we, we get something in between. Voy a parchear primero. I'm going to patch first to place the light. show you how they work as little glazes indeed these ones will be good for your glazing techniques bully um, because you you work a lot with very thin layers and I guess that you can take advantage of these paints as well for that purpose In a diluted version, they work really well. The color is vibrant enough, especially this skin tone, this is what I'm trying right now. They take a little bit more than, I, than what I expected to dry, so that, mean, that means that it will take a while until I get used to the, the painting rhythm that I need for this, but as I will be checking them uh, on the Patreon uh, during the whole month, uh, then if you are interested, you can, you can watch the videos and you will see how, how they dry. But well, I mean, it's something with that I said before, you know, with any uh, new brand, you have to to take some time to check and to see how you adapt uh, this to your uh, painting methods. You know that in my case it's very aggressive uh, and sometimes uh, that's not the best way, obviously, uh, especially if the if the coverage is not or, or the thickness and the viscosity is not the one that I'm so I'm used to it, right? Inks, maybe mix it with some red and diluted. Inks are really good. I really like them. You can quickly tint. Yeah, you can quickly tint. So, well, I don't know. If there is something that you have doubts, I have been doing like a very quick sketch, obviously, nothing is finished. I'm just placing colors slightly, ra not randomly, but you know, like testing. As a conclusion, I will say that the color range is really great. Indeed, um, David is going too Polish on Instagram that if you're not uh, following us on Instagram, uh, you should. We have an Instagram of the uh, Miniature Art Academy that David will write it now uh, on the chat. Os va a escribir, si no nos seguís en Instagram, pues seguidnos porque estamos subiendo también. We're uh, uploading also step-by-step -step processes. And uh, I will show you like a panoramic view of the different uh, colors, 
right? So you can see how good is the variation of colors. It's very large. Uh, tiene mucha variación de color. Uh, no nos han dado todas, pero tiene muy buena pinta en ese sentido. Mucha selección de colores. Um, el pigmento es visualmente intenso. El acabado es mate, no es ultra mate, como, como no absorbe, que parece que te, que te absorbe el propio color, como alguna, como, como por ejemplo la gama regular de Scale, que es muy, muy, es más mate que esta. Esta es una cosa intermedia, a mí en ese sentido pre, me gusta más. Eh, estoy enseñando, no, el código de mi móvil. Eh, lo que, me, lo que más me ha gustado, los metálicos me han gustado mucho, lo que más me ha gustado ha sido las tintas, las tintas tienen mucha variedad de color, los colores están muy bien elegidos, me falta, ya os digo, amarillo y naranja, que no sé si las hay, lo mismo me estoy equivocando y sí que las hay, por lo menos de las que yo no tengo aquí, pero eso es lo que echaría un poco de menos. Eh, y luego la selección de colores me parece que está muy bien, imagino que la cobertura del color variará depende del tono, no tengo la capacidad de probarlo todo, llevamos 2 horas y 45, creo que es bastante para un stream, eh, pero lo que menos me convence en ese sentido es que yo eh, prefiero una cobertura un poco mayor, esa es, esa es mi, mi pega personal, la mía, se parece mucho a las Code de Arms o a las Citadel antiguas, mucho, eh, pero en la cobertura se van parecido a las P3, que puede que sean similares en cuanto a composición, no lo sé, yo no sé dónde las crean, ni sé las similitudes a nivel de, de químico, ¿vale? por decirlo de algún modo. Se mezclan muy bien, el pimiento es suficientemente fino y no rompe cuando mezclas con otras, eh, con otras pinturas. Eh, probarlas en aerógrafo, las probaremos, eh, pues mira, a lo mejor hacemos un streaming rápido para Instagram, así que seguidnos allí. Y si no, eh, la probaremos durante el, el mes que este mes y el mes siguiente en Patreon, ¿vale? Así que chequead los vídeos porque hay cosas muy interesantes que van a ir saliendo y donde probaremos estas pinturas sobre un trabajo previo con otras, otras piezas. As a conclusion, guys, um, I'll tell you that they are really interesting in terms of colors. The selection of the colors is quite good. I really like the selection of the colors. I'm missing some tones, but probably because we don't have them here. Um, you will see how large is the variation of, uh, of these colors uh, because we will publish a picture on Instagram maybe or, or a story on Instagram that you will be able to check within the next 10-15 minutes. So please go to uh, the Instagram that we have written uh, right now on the uh, chat, Miniature Art Academy. Uh, we have started very recently and we, and we are uh, trying to grow. So if you like the content and you like what we are producing there, please share our account. That will help us a lot. As a main lack or thing that I'm missing is like some tones, for example, for the inks. I will be very happy if, if we have yellows or oranges, right? Also some fuchsia. This is my personal taste, what I'm, I'm missing. Uh, I find them very similar to... P3 in the cover is somehow uh, to Citadel and Code Arms, the old ones, uh, the old Citadel ones. Uh, in terms of color, really interesting. Uh, the coverage, I guess, that it varies depending on the different tones. Um, but this is like the thing that, to me, is the, the less interesting things that sometimes I will, will have to mix them with something with a better coverage. But also something with a better coverage means sometimes that is more dry as well, you know, and that you cannot flow much longer. So each uh, color has different properties and then you have to choose depending on what you like. If you glaze, if you are more refined on your painting, if your painting is more based on subtlety, then those paints are really good for this. And in terms of colors, uh, the colors in terms of tonalities, nothing to complain. The metallics are fantastic, inks are fantastic, the color choice is fantastic, just this uh, little point, to be honest, sincerely. And well, that, that's all for today. We have been streaming for almost three hours. Um, so, well, I hope this has been useful for you. I'm going to make a last round of questions. And then please go to our Instagram, subscribe, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Help us to grow so you will have uh, the chance to see much more videos, much more content like this. 
and and well if you if you want to give us uh, the chance uh, to impress you uh, please go to our patreon that david is also writing the the direct link to the patreon uh, link direct to our patreon por favor uh check it there are dozens of videos we have pro we have produced like 90 videos in eight months or or 80 videos in eight months that have been crazy amount of work we have also some guest artists like marmas clans david is painting as well me and painting and um and we are producing many different kind of different videos and many different uh, kind of different processes explanation full explanations theory um pigments tools and tips different processes different procedures because i don't paint only in one way and i think it's quite interesting just for 13 dollars you can ha have the chance to try i seriously recommend you it's just 13 dollars try if you don't like you leave i think that you will like it a lot now we are painting uh, as i showed you before uh this the, this store this is in, still in progress in progress i'm painting it right now it will be finished during this month and well hope to see some of you there uh so to to give you a good welcome uh i will check the questions the last questions right now and uh, so if you have some questions just write them quite quickly and then we will leave because it's already almost three hours uh streaming <clears throat> vale bueno Bueno, chicos. Um, okay, guys. Uh, factory, good work. All I love your work and willingness to share. Thank you very much. Thanks for your work, for for your words. Uh, well, guys, uh, thank you for watching, chicos. Muchas gracias por vernos. Siento la mezcla de idiomas, guys. Um, thank you for watching. I'm very sorry for the mixture of languages, but this is how it is. This is the only way to keep it alive by mixing both languages. And uh, we are uh, now not so many. We are uh, 51. Thank you for staying with us, still alive after the battle. Uh, and well, if you uh, if you want to to review the video or if you are new, welcome to the video, welcome to our channel. Please subscribe. Please go to Instagram, subscribe as well. We are producing a lot of content, and we are on Patreon, developing a really good job. So uh, it will be good if you have the chance to to check it. So guys, thank you very much, chicos. Muchísimas gracias, Rosa. Eres un sol, la mejor del mundo. Y nada, hasta la próxima. See you. And go to Nocturna Kickstarter. Ir al Kickstarter de Nocturna. Take a look. Maybe it's interesting to try. Uh, give them support. These guys has been doing an amazing effort, an amazing work for the last decade. And they deserve to have some support. So uh, I just uh, share the the, web, uh, the website of Kickstarter right now where you can check the project and if you're interested you can also uh, give them your uh, your support uh, chicos si os interesa es bastante interesante eh, ha subido bastante eh, en, ha subido la hostia en la, en la última hora así que mira me alegro mucho no sé si tenemos algo que ver pero si tenemos algo que ver me alegro más todavía así que nada eh, mucha suerte Mucha suerte a los chicos de Nocturna, hacéis un curro de puta madre y las figuras son muy bonitas. Intentaré arreglar el destrozo que he hecho eh, pintándola eh, más dedicadamente, sin espectadores, eh, para que Jesús esté orgulloso de mí y no, y no se ofenda con el destrozo de la, de la pieza. Así que nada, las, las pinturas molan mucho, ya lo haremos en persona. Muchas gracias por colaborar con nosotros, por dejarnos probarlas. Ha sido algo bonito, especial. Os lo agradezco. Nos vemos en la siguiente, ¿vale? Chao, chao, chao. Bye, bye. Thank you very much. Bye.